All right, it's 8 o'clock. Let's call the meeting to order. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we know that uh, sometimes we enter into prayer. It seems like such a peaceful time of petitioning you for things we need, but Lord, oftentimes it's been referred to as entering a war room where strategy is needed and sometimes divine intervention. Lord, we know these leaders that stand before us have to battle a lot. We you know, they have to battle overwhelming circumstances. They have to battle unnecessary and foolish criticism sometimes, and even battling their own uh, their own uh, convictions and integrity, Lord, to make right decisions. I pray, Lord, that you just give them all that wisdom, Lord, not only to make decisions here today, but to live by those convictions when they leave. And so we, again, thank you for your presence. Thank you for how you've worked through this community, kept our, our people safe out there uh, on the police and fire and, and road crew. And Lord, we just, again, just ask for your, uh, your will in this meeting today, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, any announcements or correspondences? Mike, do you have any announcements? Uh, not today. Yeah. Sue? No. Well, I mean, I guess I can make one announcement. I just talked to one of our, one of our commissioners actually called me back, uh, Kathleen. And uh, that was an interesting conversation about recycling. But other than that, good. Okay. Um, the only one I have is I met with a homeowner last night, um, had some concerns with the township, uh, made some clarifications. Uh, we had some concerns about the park division, how that works, has a better understanding of it now. Um, also had some concerns related to the roads back in Butternut Ridge. Uh, when those were going to get paved, I said we're working on road list and we keep them updated as we go forward. And lastly, wanted to talk about recycling. Um, we had some concerns with why we're arguing over 70 to 80 cents. Uh, but after we talked about it and explained the whole background behind that, and uh, basically about the legalities of the contracts um, and the concerns with the reductions in services um, and the costs that were supplementing for drop offs. He was more supportive of, of us holding the ground with that now. Um, I believe he was only getting part of the story. So. That's good. Yeah. Glad you called it. Yeah, so we actually met up here. We met for about an hour and a half last night. Good. So. Good, good, good. All right. Any other? Uh, next, meeting guests. We have no meeting guests today. Uh, minutes. Does anybody have a chance to review and sign those? There are two of them. There's a 129 <laughs> public hearing and a 129 regular meeting. Um, Adam, make a motion that we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, John, who is sending those over now with Nancy being out? So make sure to get on the website. Christian. Christian will send them over. Okay. Just wanted to make sure it was part of the plan. Um, agenda. Any additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah. I think under admin, we want to talk about cleanup day. Okay. So number one, cleanup. April 25th. Anybody else have any additions? Yeah. Um, under admin number two, I'd like to put um, Kent Jed. I just want to give a recap from that meeting and just fly financial statements for the board. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll put the number three under admin recycling, just because it's outstanding. Any other additions? I'll make a motion to accept the agenda with the amendments of admin one, cleanup day 425, admin two, Kent Judd, admin three, recycling. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Purchase orders? Well, I have reviewed them and I'll make a motion that we accept the purchase orders. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Warrants? I'll make that motion. Accept the warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, it's now time for public comments and questions. Any public comments or questions today? Where's Clyde when you need him? It's going to be a fast meeting today. <laughs> Seeing no public comments <laughs> or questions. <laughs> we will move on to safety concerns. Any safety concerns that we need to address? Department heads. Those trees that are leaning on Sherman, are they going to cut them all the way down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now it just goes to water. <clears throat> okay. I don't want to mop it with all the snow. Yeah, so. okay. And you're ready for tonight? Mm -hmm. Two to five? Is that what they're still saying? Ten, nothing. It'll be one to eight. <laughs> one to twelve. It's all depends where the cross line is. Freeze line is. Four set. Talk to it. All right, we'll move into the regular portion of our meeting. Uh, we'll start with the police department. Roy was unable to be here um, due to training, but he did send me in a report. So um, information for the board that he's presented. Broomfield Police Department is hosting a police social media academy workshop on February 12th and 13th at Kent State University. That's where he's at. Um, two members of Broomfield Police Department are in attendance at that. Um, page two is uh, activity summary of our criminal patrol detail with Ohio State Highway Patrol. So we can see what they did with that. That was on 2 7 of 20 um, from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. They had 34 traffic stops, 28 warnings issued. Um, they had six driving under suspensions and four miscellaneous traffic violations. So they had, um, and that was a, a, uh, Overtime incurred by this is actually being reimbursed back to the township from an OSP <coughs> program. So it was just a, a joint detail that we did with Ohio Patrol, which was nice that we were invited for that. Uh, Burnfield Police Department supervisors are meeting with regional loss prevention leaders from Myers on February 19th. They're going to start discussing loss prevention programs and protocols for the reopening. So we're getting closer to that. And they're going to have a Did they name an opening yet? Uh, not that. <coughs> It's like Menard is going to open before they do. It's got their sign package done last time. So last I spoke to uh, about Myers' contractor, he said he made it there. He has to hand the keys over. It's kind of an idea. All right. Um, lastly, he is asking for board authorization um, to process a purchase order in the amount of $3,312 available to the city of Stowe for our 2020 Metro SWAT fair share fees. This is a planned um, annual expense that we pay because we are part of Metro SWAT, but he needs a motion and an approval for this. Um, Can I even make the motion? Yes, yeah, so I'll make the motion to <coughs> accept the uh, agreement and the payment of $3,312 to the city of Stowe for the 2020 Metro SWAT fair share. So, I'll second it. Any discussion? This is just, um, they disperse us based on different department sizes and those pieces. I think we've been in this for a few years now. We were out and then we were back in. Yep. It's the normal annual fee that they've been doing the last couple of years. No questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 And that will end the police department report. Moving on to the fire department. All right, I'm going to be real quick. Um, you all know this, but we posted for a firefighter position. Um, that position has come uh, completely open. I knew that uh, Lori was looking to leave. He gave me the official resignation letter. So I knew that was coming, but uh, we wanted to post anyways. And they'll have a test on March 25th. Um, we've already got 12 applicants in, uh, which seems small, but I will be learning uh, later that no one's uh, trying to be a firefighter anymore. Uh, what I learned at the OTA conference, city of Borden and fire chief was speaking to him. They're putting on a test for the city of Flint. That just blows my mind. I just remember when I was coming in, and I would say at Akron, you, you'd have to choose a day. It was hundreds of people. So if we're at 12, hoping to get 20 to 30 would be great. So 
that's kind of, yeah, I, I learned a lot at that class. But uh, yeah, even uh, Kent, Kent's doing a <clears throat> test at the same time, City of Kent, 20 hours. That's just unheard of. So I, I don't know what, what the deal is, but all we need is one. So. Do we want to accept Rory's, Rory's resignation? Yeah, uh, do you need an, an exact date on that? Just bring it back. And if I do, hold on. Just give me a second. You can bring it back to the next meeting. I know the exact date will be the 20th. February 20th will be his last day. Do we need to accept his resignation? So you want to make that motion so you can accept the resignation? Yeah, I make that motion. What's, how do you spell where he's last name? Uh, Coleman, no. C O L E M A N. I need a second to accept the resignation. We'll segue it. I think it was 224. Uh, 220. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I guess my only comment to that is uh, Rory, Rory's not leaving us because he doesn't like it here. He's leaving us because he had a much higher paying job. So I can't compete with that. So it just yeah. is what it is. Yeah, we hate to see somebody go, yeah. but we get it. We trained them very well. Well, I hate. I would hate for someone to say, you know, I do this and that. No, it had nothing to do with that. It was twenty thousand more than what we can give them. So more power to him. Well, we do. We we really have very highly trained. Yeah. No, we'll get someone else. Go. We'll be fine. So, and, and I have nothing else unless you guys have questions. How are we getting you back on the deed search? Deed search. Yeah. search. Called them yesterday. They're working on it. So. Okay. So they give it. They pass that oh. off to the no. subcontracted lady. Okay. And just it's in her list. Okay. So, so. any idea how long it'll take? Uh, she supposed to be here next week. Okay. Uh, so what what Nick is talking about? Uh, we had some comments from the the public last meeting that. If we want to build a fire station expand into the park, we can't because there's deed restrictions. So I went over to the county and started searching and you know, spun a needle in a haystack for me. So we're going to have a company actually uh, do it for us and say there is deed restrictions, there's not deed restrictions. They don't they haven't found I went back to nineteen oh one and I didn't see it. So oh, we need to know that answer. So and, and, and I don't, if I miss it, I want someone else <laughs> that actually does it. Right, because do then it. we have some coverage. Yeah, I tried, but right. yeah, so we'll get those answers. So if you can't hire anyone, do we need a new station? You don't have anywhere to put them. <laughs> no, they want to put in there. Well, this is, this is going to be a replacement. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get – we still need a new station. Don't you see that new droid that's going around on the Internet? That, uh, can't think what her name is. Where we talked to her. And they have an hour interview with her. Oh, she oh with the AI, AI system in it. Yeah. And she talks right back to you. Well, so we I know you're saying something different, but we're speaking on the same terms. We gotta, we gotta look at this of what the future is when we do build. I know. I can't there is no it. reason to say that we should, we won't have battery powered squads for very soon. They already got them in cars, so. I'm looking for a waitress that won't talk back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. All right, so <laughs> admin. <laughs> uh, admin, if we wanted, it was already kind of already on here, but we'll just, uh, I guess, before we get into the ones you added, OTA conference, the majority <clears throat> of us attended. Is there any comments anybody wants to make? I don't know. I think the conference is great. I, I was glad to see that Mike Guerrero will make it down this year in addition to all of us that have been going. And Craig, too, this was your first year. Um, the OTA conference is a great opportunity because they have training sessions all throughout three days, and it allows us to um, learn from different townships of how they do things, and um, allows us to kind of network with some of those townships, too. It's amazing. Well, we're the largest in Portage County. Um, you look across the state, we're kind of small compared to some of those, too. Um, there's, there's very large townships that exist out there. Um, there was a USDA one that I sat in on. Um, they do loans, and so we're looking at some options at how we can help the community with this. It was very interesting to find out that, um, first of all, there's potential we can look at USDA loans um, for a fire department expansion potentially, but it, 
identified some potential roadblocks for us too that we can now deal with. The other one was um, the USDA is doing loans for low-income families. So if you're under that $60,000 uh, mark for your family, um, the USDA will do a house loan. And they gave the example of buying a $125,000 house. It could be a $60,000 house and you put $40,000 in to fix it up. But the USDA will, um, uh, with a 640 credit score, would get you a 100% financed, zero down, 1% interest rate loan to purchase those houses. Um, so we're gonna work on some projects behind the scenes here initially to use that to help when we have houses that uh, maybe go on the market, go into foreclosure, instead of seeing um, them turn into these rental properties that may not always be managed, maybe work with some local realtors to help bring in families that could fix those up and then be paying less than they're paying in rent. Um, that's a really good opportunity to work with the USDA. Yeah, that was great, yeah. So. Well, I, I attended the conference and um, found out a lot of things, met a lot of new people. But um, I think, in my opinion, on our Zoning Commission Board and our BZA Board, that they have their classes down there for the people that do that kind of stuff here. And I would like to see some of our people on those boards go down and take those classes or have somebody very knowledgeable in zoning and our boards to come in here and actually do some training with our volunteers that we have on these boards. Because I think, you know, we're, we have to look like 20 years down the road. And a lot of this stuff, you don't learn it on the job. You just don't know what you don't know. And I would really like to see something like that. Well, we did start some education last year. We're going to do it again this year on the legal process. And so there's behind the scenes, there's been kind of a slow build up to get some more education. Into the board. I'm also looking at the APA. So we're, we're members of the APA. And I'd like to get them down there, at least for the <coughs> conference. Uh, have you attend as well. Um, I think those are very uh, important for the boards. There's a really good training. Perfect. Any other comments on OTA? Yeah, I, I talk about spring cleanup. Yeah, go ahead and spring clean up. Hey, you know, we did this last year. And this year, this is last year. And this year, when we do it, we need to start our marketing a little bit earlier, like maybe by the end of this month in the newsletter or in the media. I called I called the Hazel Street Recycling and talked to the owner. And she is going to supply us one of those great big great big dumpsters like twice the size of I what 30 40 feet big long thing but um, she's gonna supply it to us at no cost and I thought that was really great for her to do that I don't know that she would want that spread around that it was at no cost because it might really backfire on her. but I appreciate that she's willing to help her so. but they are making money on everything that's collected right yeah yeah when they take it whatever is in there they keep it. So don't feel bad. Oh my God. I know. But anyway, she said that um, on this cleanup day that she's looking forward to it. And I hope we let people know that they can bring appliances that are dead and lawn mowers, but they can also bring furniture. And then um, John is going to get another dumpster from Kimball. And that'll be the trash that goes to the landfill where my big dumpster is for the stuff that goes to the recycling center. So you have two different avenues that you can. So you're collecting paint too, right? No. Okay. No. I don't know what so to do with it. <coughs> when you have paint, don't you just let <coughs> it dry out and then put it in your regular you, trash? There, there's disposal facilities you can put. Um, if you don't yeah, have a drop off, they say to put cat litter and it will absorb it. Yeah, I'm just put it in your recycling <laughs> Well, you know. I'm well, kidding. The, so, the recycles at one time they did have they did have paint you could go over there and get it. I know that was back when they were confused with the community and hoping it's out. Yeah. Of yeah. So, but anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to this, and I just want to I just want it to be a good thing. I just wondered if I could bring a, a crock pot and do some hot dogs, so a hot dog and a can of pop. Are you going to do Make that? Make it a time? nice, yeah, I'll be there. You're going to sell it? Yeah. Well, yeah. You're going to sell it. What are you going to do with the money? Put it back in the township. Parks and Rec. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Because we could do hot dogs and a can of pop while you're sitting there throwing your stuff. And a hand sanitizer. You gotta have that too. But anyway, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. And I'll be working, working with Cassie on that. We're excited. April 25th. Um, next is the Kent Jed. So if you want to take one, pass them down. This will be one of a couple documents. Uh, we attended the uh, Kent Jed meeting for the year end. And I just wanted to give you an update. As you can see on here, um, final budget. <coughs> we were proposed to, uh, they had planned that we were going to get $56,300 from the Kent Jed um, for 2019. Um, the Kenton Jed was actually a little more active than we anticipated. <laughs> so Brimfield Township ended up bringing in $77,798. So that kind of gives you a breakdown of that, of what was brought in for 2019 for us. So we get a big, I mean, who moved into the Jed that would have? You know, we talked about that and there was nothing big that moved in there. So we don't know if there was just, it was a little bit busier, if there were some pay increases. Um, there was we had We had three warehouses come in on my holiday in the back. Okay. Um, and we had, uh, you know, the Mexican place. Yeah, so it wasn't anything Nothing substantial. Did. that It so was just kind of odd. Amount, right? What's that? We did get uh, the M&I. I mean, everything, it, it all equals out. It does equal out. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you that on another form here, too. But I just wanted you to see this is the year-end report. That what, were, what were the refunds, Nick? Um, refunds happen when... Somebody pays into the Kent Jet and okay. in the town right. Jet. Okay. So then we have to refund yeah. them a check and then, and then it goes back to them. Right? Back to Talmadge? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next page here I'm going to pass around for you to have a copy of. Um, this is the proposed budget for 2020. Um, this is pending. It was not approved at the meeting because there were some questions on the uh, bank balances. We're not adding up. Um, so there needs to be some financial adjustment. But right now we're looking at budgeting uh, John seventy thousand is what we're predicting that we that we bring in. Okay. If that helps your kind sure. of budget for this year. So they're projecting less? Um, well it's because it was an anomaly that we went from fifty six to seventy seven, we're projecting we don't really think that was a, a true number there. We think that there might have been some um, construction happening and some other little pieces that brought those numbers up. If we make more, we still get more, but this is just this is the, the safe number. Well, Mike, when's that nursing home going in? It's supposed to start by July. So that would be a lot of construction. Mm -hmm. If we get more, that's fine. It's, it's better for us to budget a little right. bit under than and to budget over than find one in the hole. And the new finance director might be finishing this up because I think Poppy was leaving that day. Yeah, it was so his last day. And he hired uh, Rhonda Hall. Mm -hmm. So and she'll be pretty good. Yeah, so this is basically a draft you're looking at right now. I'll mm -hmm. bring back the official once we have it loaded on at the next meeting. Well, and from a budget perspective, from the, the Jets, all I do is take the years before budget okay. and use that in our, our, our budget amount. And then I'm always a year behind okay. just for cases like this. So I don't budget in there 77 and it goes back down to 50 again. Right. And we made plans to spend $77,000 and we only got 50. So right. I just, I'm very conservative with the Jets. And then by the end of the year, it's just a bigger carryover going into the next year. Okay. So, you will notice on here there is an annual audit. Um, it's not really annual. It's supposed to be every other year, so it wasn't on the other um, balance sheet because this will be the year that we get the finances audited. So we have to pay a fee for that. Then lastly, if you want to take one and pass them down. And this will be... The, the annual audit. I'm just... I mean, the way Talmadge says it, I mean, they take care of all of our administrative expenses. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't Kent take care of all the administrative expenses? Because we pay for all the fire and the safety, and they basically just take our money and walk away. Let me get clarification on who, who is <coughs> actually paying that, if it's coming out of our distribution, but it's a 50-50 split. Yeah, if you want to Kent, it's your much pays for it all. Yeah. They right. feel guilty taking the Well, let me find out next minute. It's a good question. Yeah, yeah I'll find I have it marked here for the next <coughs> Okay, thank you. And this last page just kind of gives you a breakdown. The most important thing is right down in this corner over here, Mike. This tells you what we've been paid in the past few years. So it shows us the payments from 16 through 19 for both Kent, Brimfield, and then the M&I fund. So we can see a steady growth within that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got more papers for you. <laughs> but I just wanted you to have a copy of these reports, too, so that you could see exactly what. And then I dropped off those checks um, to Nancy. 
um, the daily meeting. Yeah, but can we put it on the far side? We can. Yes, that's where we put it all. Okay. But other than that, it was a good meeting. Um, I was elected as the treasurer for the Kent and Jazz, so I'll be doing that. Sorry, fight with Nick. Yeah, so we, we got to fight now. <laughs> all right, Nick, I'm not going to you anymore. Thanks. So yeah, just how, how you, it went pretty good? Yeah. yeah. It was, it, was, it was pretty smooth. There wasn't too much. Um, I think they were kind of in a hurry to get out, though, too. It was Coffee's last day, and there was some celebration going on after the meeting. So. Were we invited? No, I didn't get to the meeting. We had a meeting with the, with the commissioner. Okay, thank you. All right. And then I'll move on to recycling. Um, I wish I had more of an update on recycling. Where the recycling program stands right now is the county is still – I'm going forward with their plan of every other week recycling. So this is the last full week of recycling. Next week there will be no pickup according to their email. Um, and then it'll start on the um, calendar. Starting on the week of the 16th, that will be the pickup. No. No, that's not right. Well, there's a lot of cans that are sitting out full right now. It, it didn't come until like 8 o'clock. Oh, well, I mean, they're still sitting out full today. Oh, they came by last night about it. It would be the week of the 24th. Maybe. Yes, the week of the 24th. Well, right. you said they can't keep it at help, can they? I mean, they're they're down five drivers? Yeah, they're down. <laughs> they hired a driver, I believe I saw yesterday, um, but they're down drivers. Um, so recycling is getting picked up late. I've had a couple uh, residents contact us asking why the recycling wasn't picked up. Yeah. Um, the response is you need to call the district because – we can't guarantee pickup because we're not we're outside of a contract. There is no cost to the residents for this service. Um, the district is at this point eating that cost. Um, so when they did contact them, they would email me back and say, "Oh, they're running behind. They're having trouble with service. They'll be out late, so they've been picking up late." So then, yeah, for clarify, the week of the 16th, there's no pickup. Week of the 23rd, we start the every other week. The day that you get picked up stays the same as it's been. So not changing your day. So next, it's only the week. Next Monday, there's no pickup. Correct. So, just so I understand, are they going to retroactively charge all their? No, that's that's not the. So it's waived until. The right. only way they can retroactively collect money at this point is if Brimfield Township entered into an agreement. And that agreement said there was retroactive payment. Because we can't come in an agreement um, at this point, there's no way for them to get the retroactive pay on that. Okay, so so the thing that you know Brian Ames is talking about their drivers, how they're running. 14 hours a day or whatever. Yeah. I mean, with your, because, you know, you're very involved with the labor pool. Is that legal? I mean, so there are some, and I haven't dug deep into it to get the legalities of it. Um, townships, cities, counties, state get some exemptions to those, some of those um, uh, driving regulations. Uh, for example, we were talking about this. Firefighters technically don't have to have a CDL. So even though that, it's a very large truck. There's there's some exemptions in, in the uh, Ohio Administrative Code for that. So we're getting these guys on our roads late at night who have probably been driving for hours. Right. Yeah, they're working long shifts right now. I don't want to argue that, though, because I have my guys on the road for 14, 16 hours, too, in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I hate to say it that way, but it, it does come to that point. Right. You know, we have some idea. You know, the only thing that pissed me off was the way, you know, the, the side, you know, the, the head guy was saying how it's, you know, he doesn't have to follow the rules. Right. Well, where we stand right now is that we're waiting for a response from the county. I called the county commissioners um, on the 7th um, after the meeting on the 6th to have an update. And recycling wasn't discussed during the commissioner's meeting for Brimfield. They said we're, we're not going to discuss that right now. Um, I asked if it would be discussed on the 13th. Um, I was told that no, it will not be a point of discussion on the 13th either because Commissioner Klein will not be in attendance at the meeting. She has a previous appointment, so they're going to hold off on that for another week. So the earliest we as the board might hear about this will be uh, February uh, 20th that we might discuss it at that meeting. They actually met yesterday instead of the 13th. Okay. Uh, well, no, they normally meet on Tuesdays too. They have Tuesday and Thursday meetings. No. No, they only meet on Tuesdays, one day of the month. Okay. And um, the rest of the month, they have all their business on Thursdays. But this month, or this week, they moved the meeting to Tuesday. Okay. So that... And Vicky wasn't at that one, though, either. No. Not and only it was a very was short our... meeting. They really didn't discuss it. Yeah, I saw the video. Right. 
So, yeah, so we're looking at 20th being the earliest <coughs> that we're, we're going to hear anything, so at least another week and a half here. Uh, my only concern is, you know, I'm getting questions from citizens of what's the <coughs> answer. When are these public meetings going to be held to? Um, we do have concerns with the public meetings. Um, not that we don't believe the commissioners should have the right to meet with them, but if they're going to mandate a program, it should be a countywide mandation. Um, it shouldn't just be a mandation for permit. Well, it has to be. Right. Um, so we're waiting to hear what their resolution is, and then from that point we can get with legal counsel um, to see what our next move will be. All right. And that's well, what we said. There was not much of an update. We're still <coughs> where we were. Well, there definitely seems to be dissension on their board. So. Right. Yeah, we keep asking for updates, and um, I did, I don't know if I, uh, I did report this to the board last week. Um, I tried to talk to Mr. Steiner about this, um, and he basically said, um, at this point, I'm too busy. I don't have time to have this conversation. Um, he refused to answer any questions that I asked. Um, so I let him know that we'll just ask questions to the legal counsel moving forward. Right, and I tried to get a hold of all the commissioners, and I only had two. I mean, one, I've been waiting for three weeks to call me back, so I don't know. Maybe she's not, but you know, Sabrina and Kathleen at least uh, returned my calls. Right. And Sabrina, but Sabrina's been a great support through this whole thing. You know that, so. Right. Yeah. She she answers calls. She's <coughs> feedback. We're trying to find some resolutions to bring for, before the board. Unfortunately, for it to get before the board of commissioners, Bill Snyder has to be willing to present it to them, and we haven't seen that happen. Hmm. Well, we'll just keep getting the free uh, service thing. So. Yep. So that is an update of where we stand today. Thank you. Anything else under admin? If not, we'll move into zoning. Thank you. Um, zoning's requesting board approval for the prosecutor to proceed with complaint at 4695 Estes Drive. Um, this is junk, car, junk cars, um, appliances, everything else that's, that's been out in the yard. We cited them several times. They're not clean enough. So it's time we, we proceed with this. We did give it to the prosecutor some time ago. He says he doesn't have a motion from the board, which Jim's looking for it. But we're going to do it anyway just to keep going um, and try to speed it up. So you guys sent it over and they lost it? Well, he sent it over and we didn't hear back. So we kept emailing and trying to get a response of when, when things are going to happen. And he gave us these two back and he says he doesn't have a motion on it. So, can you tell me how long, how many cases you have sitting before the prosecutor's office right now? I believe it's eight. Eight. I only ask that because just so the board is aware, Ritztown has the same issue. They have multiple cases sitting before the prosecutor's office, um, and they're not moving forward. So he's kind of solved right now. Why are they not moving forward? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. We're going to have an answer for that. Is this why we push a limited self-rule even faster? Limited whole rule? Yeah. Limited whole rule would eliminate this this process for us would allow us to use our um, own law director in these cases. That would be a great story for you. I mean, I don't know, the county is in such disarray. I mean, how they can't even you know, give back to us on criminal cases. I mean, we're also waiting on the, uh, the what, cob or whatever we're, what, the vehicle is that we're waiting on them to decide with the, uh, oh, the CRA. CRA. I mean, it's sitting on their desk. I mean, I don't know what the heck these commissioners and people do. Can you imagine if we did that here? Try to be efficient. All right, so I will make a motion to file a complaint with the prosecutor's <laughs> office for 4695 SD's drive in relation to junk cars and appliances on the property. I will second it. Uh, any discussion on that? It or done. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So zoning is requesting a board approval for a prosecutor to proceed with the complaint at 3533 Sunnybrook Road. This is a similar situation, um, junk cars and trucks. I will make a motion to proceed with a complaint to the prosecutor's office for 3533 Sunnybrook Brook Road in reference to junk cars and trucks on the property. Second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Zoning is uh, requesting the board approval for Brett Benz, Portage County prosecutor, to proceed with prosecution of property owners at 3217 <coughs> Woods Trail. Uh, if zoning doesn't receive the site plan of progress within seven days, garage encroach on the neighbor's property. Um, 
this has been something, we had a complaint that there was a garage built without permits. It's way back in the woods, and the lady that complains has a lot of property. She says, look, it's encroaching on her property. She has a survey done. It's way over on her property. He never pulls out of her building. Nobody ever seen it built, you know, and it's been there for about 10 years. So went there, went to the BZA to try to work something out where he can either move it or cut it or do whatever he can, and they turned him out and said, remove it or move it way over and get a new zoning permit, and we just sort of sat on it, and we talked to him, and he said, well, I thought you guys were going to give us time. I said, we're going to give you six months now, so we need you to do something with it. He goes, well, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I said, we'll wait and see. So we went to proceed with the process. All right. Can you see it from the road? No. How far over is it? About eight foot. Well, I will make a motion to send to the prosecutor's office prosecution of property owners at 3217 Woods Trail. The zoning department does not receive site plans of progress within seven days. Reference garage encroaching on neighbor's property. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Zoning is requesting board approval for the Portage County Regional Planning to move forward with the comprehensive land use plan at a cost not to exceed $21,860.68. Ms. Todd is here. If anybody has any questions. Todd and I work well together. I think this is a really fair price. I was checking around, and this is usually upwards of $60,000 to $100,000 for the community our size. I do have a question. Todd, do you guys do any of this for other communities in Portage County at a lower cost or no cost at all? We do nothing for no cost because, you know, one of the things about our agency is you guys are members, but the membership fees only cover half of our budget. So we have to find revenue, and this is one of our ways to find revenue. So if you're asking, like, what do we charge other communities? We charge streets for other visitors. We charge them $30,000, you know, after all their TA hours and the other things. And then we did Wyndham, and we did Ravenna, and we did Southfield County. And we all did theirs for basically the same price as we're asking for you guys. So we are a lower cost. I did go back and ask about your question because I was like, I was dumbfounded by your question the last time about just giving up, giving up, taking other people's time or borrowing other people's time to do your plan. So I found out that there was a certain project that impacted multiple townships back in 2005, and we did it in 2009 or 10 when I was when I was here when we did this solar wind and you know solar wind ordinance. That people did give up some of their time to do those projects, but it wasn't for a community just giving other people's time. I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean, you could always ask for other people's time. No, I just, I, I just seemed like there was more than just once. It seemed like Dick Mester had that request all the time. Well, well, and we never used you guys, and all we did was just well, yeah, give up our time. And, and that's what irritates me is because I want everybody to use me. You know what I mean? We're not, we're not a magazine subscription like as much as the last name. We could, you know, use us, use us, use us, use us. I think some townships. I can't speak for every township, and I, or do I know exactly how they think? But I think some townships are worried that when they use us, that if we go over an hour, we're going to come back and hit them up with some, some extra dollars, right? And technically, that's what the bylaws say. But I'd be my darndest not to hit people up for extra money. I mean, I do everything I can to stay within your TA hours because I know, you know, your townships are limited on their expenses. So, but I, I guess my only the TA hours. I mean, have there been years that we haven't used any of those, but paid our fees to have those, and we haven't used any of them at all. Like, and well, now it's our time to use them, and we have a big fee, but we paid all those think, years. I think you never used the hours until I came on board. The problem is they're not rollover hours like with your Verizon phone, right? If you don't use, if you have 100 minutes with Verizon and you only use 50 minutes this month, next month you get 50 added to it. Okay. Um, and then it, you can snowball. The way the agreement is, if, I, if I'm correct with you, is we only have one year of rollovers, correct? Yeah, you get last, you get all 19. Whatever you had left in 19, you get the year. And sometimes what I, what I also what I do to help encourage, like I did with Southfield, for example, to help pay for this is if that's an issue. The, um, if we go into the beginning of 2021, you can use 21, 2021 hours too. So now you've got more time to throw into the project and spread a little bit of cost here and be a little bit of cost into the next year or two as a way to pay for these things. And you, you know as well as I do, in the USDA, they're explaining to folks that you need a comprehensive land use plan. And you've got to go from there, when you have a project, you've got to go to your strategic plan in order to get these loans. Right. Um, any kind of grants.
it's anything like that, you have to start with the comprehensives, work off of it, go to your strategic, and if you know it's costly, I know there's money involved, but that's how it works. Have we have we've had comprehensive land use plans before or no? Eighty eight was it? Eighty eight. Okay, so yeah, the last plan you did was eighty eight. I hear this from the townships quite a bit about the plans that sit on the shelf. We why are we spending all this money on this on the shelf? So we have got a new concept that is not going to sit on your shelf, it's going to sit on your website where public can get to it easily. And then your 88 plan, for example, it says, Here, here's all these wonderful goals of, and objectives and strategies we're going to do, and they are good, but they had no reference as to who's doing it, how do we get this done, timelines or anything. So that's something that's going to be incorporated in this process too. Um, if you look at the streets, you look at all the current plans we're doing, we're, we're identifying who are the implementing entities or agencies. It doesn't always, it's not always the township. Who are the implementing entities to get this stuff done? And I think that is a big difference from your ADA plan. I just, what I can't understand, I mean, we have accomplished so much here without any of this. And we're still going to keep accomplishing it without any of it. And I mean, I, I just don't get it. I mean, so you get no money from Portage County. No, no, we do get money. They're a member. They, they pay. How much do they pay? They pay about one hundred forty-five, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Well, where does your check? Are you are you an employee of Portage County? No. Okay. I do get a check from signed by Janet, but we're you know Portage County Regional Planning is my higher vice code. The higher vice code says that a, the county has to have one of two things. They either have to have their own county planning department, or they could have a planning commission. So the, the my thoughts are, I mean. Portage County is making so much money from all of our commercial development. Tell them to help pay part of that. Well, in essence, they are. Um, they, but not enough. Well, they're paying. They're paying I mean, out. are there? Not everybody is on this, right? So you, you said how many people have signed up? I mean, are we the only ones that are holding out, or holding out? I mean, no, this is this is <laughs> this isn't for the county. This is only for Brimfield. And We're asking them to build a plan for Brimfield to have. Yeah, uh, before, yeah. I don't know. You're, it's probably you're probably I'm probably the wrong one to ask about any more plans. I'm just. You're, okay, so we've asking. Craig, about, how do you feel? I don't. I think I need more information. I do too. I just for me personally to understand. And John, I know so you have a lot of questions. And I do because you brought up USDA and getting grants yeah, I don't, and I don't, all that. We've done all that in the past without having one in place. I mean, the police department's USDA law over there that we did in. What 2010 or whatever it was? Your architect would have done. So we would have paid an architect for that. Yes. I don't remember any of that. Would have been I mean, part, I was pretty part of the plan. And see what they had to do was due diligence, and they had to do the whole plan. It was mostly about three hundred thousand. It's just a lot of money. I just, I can't make a decision. See, I don't. I don't. Well, I mean, here's the issue. Strategic and, plans. And, and here's here's my concern is that that we brought this up two weeks ago. We've had two weeks to ask questions. John, have you contacted either? No, but I, I checked our records and did find that we did give hours away, not as many as I thought we did, but. When did we give hours away? We gave one away in 11, or some 11, and I think even in 13, we might have given some away. I had Nancy go through all the minutes, and we found all. There weren't there weren't that many, though. I thought there were a lot more, because it seemed like Dick Mester was always asking us to give minutes or give hours away. To help. My number is not the best, but I don't remember. <laughs> That's okay. I do. I do. Oh, I, I do, I I do remember those conversations. We did have those conversations. And Dick wanted us. Yeah, we did give them away. We did. We did. So I, mean, I, I looked into that part. Right. But other than that, no. I mean, yeah. because, I mean, we just we keep holding this, and the longer we hold this, the longer it is before we get a plan together. Because this isn't just a comprehensive land use. This is a five-year strategic plan for the township of how the departments are going to move forward. Does the fire department build build into this? How does the police department build into this? Figuring out what their action steps so we can hold the department heads accountable for the next five years. It's right now we're operating a business with no plan. We just we're till till two years ago we're throwing darts out there. And this year we made them set one year goals. I mean if you own a company and you're not setting goals, it just doesn't make sense to me. In this thirty three years I've never had a plan. No, I, I, I guess the point is I, I mean, don't know why Nick, we're paying that much money for that. You're plan. a different Right. You're in a different business than, than I am. I yeah. just, I just, I tell you, I'm sitting here for 20 years, just all this money we put away in studies, it just sits on the shelf. And, I, and I'm not going to get it to you. You know, it's just, I just, okay, so if we do go to limited home rule, I mean, and that's part of the plan. But technically, we would get rid of regional planning. You can. I mean, you we could do it. Right. I mean, if we take it all in house, and nothing against you, believe me. I mean, if we could but, do it in house, why would we want to go 
So I mean, how, how are you going to make limited home rule happen? What's what's the game plan to do that? Well, well like, you know, my, we really – well, you know what I told you. I want Mark down here. Right. I want Mark down here so we can all start planning. Because, you know, in the conversations we've had with this board, we have talked – we we understand the only way we're going to get any teeth is by creating home rule. Right. And but, so, so I guess, you know, I should, you know, personally it's probably my fault for not checking more into it, but with this, uh, this wedding coming up, I've been busy. Right. So I'm not, I don't want to hit, make you hold up again. I mean, right now I could not vote on it. So, I mean, if well, you and Sue want to make a decision. Well, you know, but what we'd want to do, since we're not done with appropriation and budgets for the year, we'd have to plug that in to make sure that we're not spending $21,000 and not having enough money to pay for it. And then have it sitting on the the shelf, and we didn't pay for something else that we needed. To okay, so in the next thing. couple of weeks, that'll all be finished. But then, right. okay, here's, here's my big issue, and, and I'm just gonna put it out there. If I have to be loud about it every meeting, I will be because it drives me crazy that we don't have a strategic management plan. So I need this board here to tell me if we don't do this, and if we hold this for another two weeks, hold for another two weeks, that this board's gonna drag their butts in here every two weeks in the evenings to hold public hearings to hear from our stakeholders and write this plan ourselves. Or do we bring a professional in here to help us write? Yeah, but does it say we have to have this plan right now? I mean, because we are—we don't have to, but, but we're having work sessions now that we are creating all this. We have we have one we have a work session once a quarter, and we finally set goals after right. two years, right? We so finally I mean, set so goals. we do have, in essence, the beginning of a strategic plan. You you started it, but we need to do five years out. And part of doing the five-year strategic management plan is bringing in stakeholders, gathering information from businesses, the school district, gathering information from the citizens. Um, and if you're doing all that work, that's what goes into a land use plan. So we're, we're, we're going to double the work if we have to eventually build this land use plan. So we we rely on another agency to help us make that happen is what I'm saying. Otherwise, we double the work to, to, to build the, the solid plan. So just so I can explain to me, because I'm not, what, what would a land use plan? Is that a redoing all of our zoning for all of our, our districts? Is that what that would be? Or? Yeah, that would be the, the land use portion would be evaluating what we currently have. Right. And the possibilities of what we could do in the future. So Which would all depend on developers coming in and buying yeah, land and doing all that. Developers, but then it's also looking at your roads and your water and sewer line. What can they handle? What do you need? What do you need to do? The one thing that I will share with you, and, and I don't want to do it really in front of the reporter, but most of the townships. <laughs> She's been out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most of the townships, when I talk to them, like, what do you, you know, I always say, what do you guys want to be someday? You know, what, what, is your, what do you want to be? be retired. Well, not you, but the, the, you know, of course we all want to retire, but I'm talking about the, as a community. What do you guys want to be as a community? What do you, what, and, and the comments I hear, now this part, I hope this is going to make it the record, but everybody says, I don't want to be Streetsboro. Yeah, no. I don't want to be Streetsboro. That, that, that's all they really say. Is, and why don't they want to be Streetsboro? Because Streetsboro, because, okay, we, when we talk about planning, I, I often talk about the fact that we can accommodate development. Planning just accommodates, you know, you say you have to have X number of acres, you have to have the setbacks, you have to have enough parking, you know, all the things you need to have. But then you get what you get, and Streetsboro got what they got. They had no real planning. They just provided an opportunity for people to go there, and we want to provide those opportunities. But if you want to do planning, you have to kind of be more, you want to be a little bit more focused on that. So, for example, like <laughs> you talked about you know, the architectural review, architectural review guidelines that Mike says he's handling on his own, which is fine, but Streetsboro didn't have that. And so you've got a mishmash of development out there. You've got traffic problems galore. And where we're at with Brinkfield, it feels a great community, a fantastic community, and you're at the cusp of you really need to really take a hard look at yourself now before you before you might become a Brickfield or before you become a Streetsboro. I mean, the last thing you want to do is have unbelievable traffic problems because we really didn't step back and take a look at what we're doing. So, I mean, that's one of the big things about the plan. You know, we're talking about the home, home rule. You know, I think that's great. That can be incorporated in the plan. We're talking about doing a survey for the community. We can ask you can ask the community how they feel about that. We can kind of prepare the community about that, and we can ask them how they feel about it. So that way, it kind of helps see that that desire. What are those whole? Do those whole weight? Those I mean, the what biggest traffic way? issue we have in Brickfield Township is on a Portage County road, which if we did a strategic land use plan to try, we couldn't well, we do might. anything about the road or the widening or I mean, how well, we've already done it for there. Well, I know, but there is, uh, and, and well, that, was, that was different. That's a safety stuff. Right. There's, there's a difference. But Portage the County rejected us. Mickey Marazzi won't even consider it. And what so. was GPD's involvement? Weren't they doing some of the same stuff that, that we were doing? No, they were doing a, they did a, a safety stuff. For, for 43 they did, but they were yeah. doing other. They were doing the interchange on 76 here. 
and they're doing a 76 over a Talmadge. Are those they, all the same things design, that you guys would do? I mean, I feel like we just pay 15 different people to do the, the same well, stuff. Well, we, we would be evaluating the land uses. Like, what's the, what's the potential development impacts to the, those roadways, right? They, I think they're looking at the existing roads, and they're looking at projections based on the past trends, and we would be doing a lot of the same things. But I think, I think you really need to sit there and think about how are we going to accommodate all this? You know, we, we talked with the residents when we did a community vision thing about a year and a half ago, two years ago. All I heard was how bad the roads, the urban problems were at Thomas, but I also heard how bad they were up here, too. They, you know, it's, it goes both ways. I think yeah. yeah. And I think part of this is is we're this is helping us see what the future is going to look like, putting it on paper and saying, here's what we want to see happen in a year, three years, five years. Well, and then when we're looking at 50, we're just saying, and we're looking at what, what this place would look like in 50 years. When you're when you're throwing a dart at one year, it's precision point, right? This is what we expect you to do. In three years, we're kind of getting in the bullseye. Five years, we're hitting it. Fifty years, we're hoping we're at least get somewhere on, on that dartboard. But also by doing that, we're saying, okay, do we want to see a bunch of big boxes right here on the street corner in downtown Brimfield? Probably not. So with our written plan, then he can develop the zoning codes that will help us direct that development and keep out what we don't want. Because if you look at Streetsboro, it is a mess through there. It's a mishmash of everything because they didn't have a vision of what they wanted it to look like, but they wanted business. So we're just going to take, 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 and it turns into this disaster up well, there. Well, I get that, but I, I guess I'm not going to get Mike either because I don't know from your perspective. Where where do you come in on all this stuff? We we pay you as an employee to develop that kind of stuff. Yes. We have GPD, and we have all these different so, hands in here. We're paying so there's, the, there's no community unless you have a certified planner on board. There's no community that does their own comprehensive plan. I've never seen that happen. Todd, have you seen any community do that on their own? They typically don't. The reason why they have you know, the, the, the land use plan is, or the town plan is so much larger than what the total job responsibility are. <clears throat> That they're already pretty much doing everything they're supposed to be doing during the time. During the time, so they, they hire consultants because we take the burden off of Mike. We take the burden off of you guys because um, we basically go out. And we we are the ones that uh, contact the communities and we, we reach out to communities and, and hold those post those meetings. You guys are you know, obviously welcome to attend and be part of that process. You know, as far as the community meetings go and stuff like that. But the idea is to take that burden off of you guys and have us be like the, the facilitator of the plan. And so, but I mean, doing, even with them doing it with the staff, it's going to take a year. Well, with, with the staff, right? Let me ask about this then too: the hours that we're paying and all. What, what if we didn't pay into that? What would that cost have been? What did it reduce this twenty-one thousand dollars from? Because it reduced like I want to say I, mean, I think I don't have a firm lead. You guys should have it. It was eight thousand. Yeah, yeah, it reduced the cost down. But you can also, if you, you know, like, so like, you're I, saying we'd be paying almost as much as street square. Yeah, exactly. But now Streetsboro oh, pays they, into they it. Have the same yeah, business. and so they took TA hours, which are they probably get more TA hours because they pay more they're, in, they're, in the fee structure. Yeah, correct. Exactly. exactly. So, so their cost really wasn't thirty; it's probably more like forty-five or fifty. Right. So mm -hmm. I mean, like Mike says, I mean, if you guys aren't comfortable with my price, you could always take it to the uh, take out the RFP and see what kind so of. I'm not comfortable you with your price. I'm just not sure how much we need it. I got more I mean, questions. That's where we differ. And I understand this. You helped explain it, so. And anybody can answer this if you don't. So right now, as we said, dollar store wants to come in. We can't stop it. Once we have a plan in place that we restrict that zoning spot to certain areas, we can't have teeth in stopping that. Well, is, yeah, so is, is that fair to say? If sure. they didn't meet the, the requirements that's what of I, the zoning district. So, for example, the logistics center that wants to come in is non-conforming use. So. Could anybody, anything to pop out anywhere if the Board of Zoning Appeals approves that. However, we make that process much, much more difficult and make them have to justify it through a legal process because we're saying this is what would exist in this zoning district. This will help us identify what that looks like. It so, also helps us identify what grants and what programs we may, may need to go after and spend our energy on in order to develop those areas. So let me expound on that. So my, my personal opinion on me, I want to put the boxes down there. I want medical right here coming into 43. I don't want anything else. Would that help create that thing? So that's so what we take is your vision of that. You take the vision of what the community, because we as a board can come up with great ideas, but we also represent the community. So all the stakeholders speak into this. The school comes over and says, listen, you know, and I'm not, this isn't what they're saying, but just an example. 
hey, we need to slow down on housing because we can't keep up with this. You're, you're killing our schools. Right. We get feedback from them, too. But can we stop that, though? Well, it's, it's all about how we zone it. And it's so does it mean we're going to stop it? No, but we're getting feedback from them about what we need to do. And then we're sharing information with them so that they can start planning for it. So the, the Zoning Board of Appeals can approve or disallow something, correct? If, it if it's, if it's non-conforming use. So, for example, we'll use the logistics center. So we would be fighting, our land use plan would be fighting against our Zoning Board of Appeals, in a sense, from them okay, allowing them to agree on a non-conforming use. Okay. Is that what we're using this for? Or? Yeah, so this gives them more evidence and more um, more tools to help them make a decision that supports the community. Because we would hope the Board of Zoning Appeals is following through with the land use plan, too. If they're trained right, and they look at what they're supposed to look at from the zoning board, it should run smoothly. But, but Mike, everything comes through you. Everything no, like, not every, it comes through me, but not everything. And every if it's single. not something you like, you're going to... You can turn it down. But you can turn it down, but they can... Board. They can appeal my decision. That's what they're doing. But even with our land use plan, if we have it, they can still appeal it. They can still appeal so, it. Anybody can appeal anything. Yes. So, well, our last, but it's much harder if you have a comprehensive land use plan, your zoning conforms, and everything's in line, and they go to a court of appeals, it's 99% sure that, that it's going to stay the way you plan. Well, was, was regional planning here when Streetsboro will go up? Uh, no. no. Regional planning, Streetsboro became a city after the 80s or something like that? Or 70s. 70s. Regional planning was in the 70s, 80s, And then Streetsboro's plan that they're using now that they adopted in 2009. <laughs> And then they did an update in 13. They just did an update in 2019. Well, you know, our land use that we were working with originally was done back in 1965. And then nothing was done until 2004 when somebody says, oh, we need to take a look at this and revise it. Now, here it is 2020. And I think we need to do, and we all, I think we all realize that we need to do something now to bring us into... 21st well, century. Well, if you look at and the land use, some of it is kind of weird. And, and Todd and I, we, you know, we looked at this and we were like, we need to change the zoning all over the place. But we don't want to do that without a plan. I mean, if you look at the GC going down 43, it goes all the way down Howe Road. Everybody's house that goes down Howe Road is in general commercial. They can't sell it. And you can't knock it down and build another house if it's, if it's dilapidated. Because you have to build a general commercial structure there. Well, so, doesn't, and you know, part of this also. Explain to us and say, what, what is this? Why are we, general, we're so far off of 43? What's, you know? Part of this also helps the developers. So if we have a land comprehensive plan and it's out on our website and Hoya Development wants to, is looking at putting in a medical building, I can easily come to this to say, oh, look, this is their vision. This is their plan. Is this going to work for me as a developer? Because I see where they want this to go. And it helps market to developers so that we can try to pull in faster those businesses that we want, right? We don't want any more big box stores. That's not helping our gen dollars. It's not helping the township at this point. We needed that to build the base of, of our economic boom here. Now we need to get in some of those higher paying jobs, those medical buildings, those uh, office suites, those sorts of things. So when you lay out the plan of what that's going to look like, now the developers can come to the website to understand that. Because right now, they don't know. And that's why we're getting things thrown at us like a logistics center. I mean, logistics center sounds great on the surface, but that's basically a big truck stop, well, <laughs> right? It doesn't sound good on the right surface. Now, <laughs> it's a fancy term. It's just going to be a big truck stop. Is really? what stuck with. Most of our yeah, areas still need services. We don't want that. I mean, medical is a great thing. Right now, we're not zoned right in, in half of our areas to get medical care. And developers want to move quick. So if they got to go through all this rezoning process, that costs them money. So we're talking about twenty-one thousand dollars, as opposed to paying sixty thousand dollars or more to update what we have, and then we need to we need these two plans in order to if we do go get a loan from someplace, the bank or whatever, to say, well, what's your plan for the future? Well, and we don't have one. That's that doesn't sound true. That we've got that's loans. We've got loans before about. with no plans or anything. Does it help the department heads say what we need to? Yeah, so what happens is we get feedback from, from the citizens. Uh, we get feedback from the stakeholders. So you're a stakeholder, too, so you're going to get input on this. And then we identify that, hey, maybe we need five more police officers in this five-year plan. So what are we going to do to make that happen now? Is it going to be a levy piece? Is it going to be a movement of funds? 
Are we looking at pushing the, the jet harder to get some more money in your in your accounts yeah. so that you can make that happen? So it helps us identify. Dave needs a new garage. Where does that fit into this this five year plan? We're going to give him an updated garage. What do we have to do? What's that plan look like? Who can <coughs> excuse me say all day that we want to build a fire station, we want to build a garage, we need to get some more equipment. But unless you have a plan of how you're going to do it and walk people through the actions, it doesn't work well. That's a and you can you can I understand. You can make that work. We've been spending a lot of money on this, and I get what you're saying. But we've been spending a lot of money, and then I'm still worried about how I'm going to build Dave's garage. We don't have any money, but we pay GPD. How much? And what do we get out of that? Yep. Nothing. Well, you're going, to, you're going to pay. Yeah, you're going to pay an architect regardless to do that. You get, regardless of what you do, you still have to do your due diligence. That was one thing we learned at the USDA. I know, but we paid thousands of dollars to GPD, it's, it's, and we got nothing. It's from commercial. I mean, I mean, what did we officially get out of that? So we've got an actual we study. Get? So we have an actual study from GPD on 43rd Street. Now, with that, we, we initially took that to Mickey Marazzi, and he said no. That battle isn't done yet. We just had to wait for the right data to come out. Now, Amex came out and is listed that high again. So now we're now we're starting to work together because that's what, what number was it? 16. 16. 16 in, in the state? Out of North 820 intersection. In northeast or the state? Mostly northeast Ohio. So out of northeast Ohio, it's number 16 for, for safety concerns. That's pretty high, right? So now we can take that data along with the safety study that shows that the, that the hazard exists there to go back to Mickey Marazzi and start pushing this issue again of that you need to fix these roads and be a little bit louder about it. We initially just kind of quietly gave it to them. Next step is we have to be loud about it because – that's the only way we're going to get our intersection. That's what fixed. GPD was doing. They were going to be allowed. <laughs> no, GPD was working with the state to try to get the funding. And the funding from the state was, listen, this this is a viable study, but the county engineers need to sign the piece of paper. So the county engineer will still need to sign the paper. Right. But now we get louder about it, and we get involved with more, more people to put pressure because he's now ignoring a dangerous intersection. This is a conversation we need to have when we jump ahead. We even do this without having a budget. Nope. So how close are we to the budget? <laughs> just to, just to well, skip ahead. I would say, I would say yes, if you give a three week next week. I, I, would, I would venture to say different. I say that regardless of the budget, you have TA hours, and he can proceed with covers of land use plan based off of that. But I don't know $21,000 in addition. That you don't have But the 21000 won't come. Yeah. I know. I have to yeah. figure out what I'm going to do with the $21,000 uh, in our budget. And we have lots and lots of things that are asked where we at for our budget to go. So the other thing is, is you did use the TA over the years, which means it's you know, not a one year comprehensive plan you can use over the next three years. I know, but I just, that's what yeah. I kind of feel. We've had them for all those years. We never used them at all. But that was our fault because we had a contract that says use them or lose them. I know. And Dick wasn't using them. I, I I know, and I, maybe it's just he said he was going to do it, but I thought we were giving our hours away every damn year to somebody else. Well, basically, you didn't give them away to nobody because we didn't use it. No, I know, but we were giving them away to help with other projects that weren't, and now it's our turn. And it's almost like a motion that he had a lot of unused hours and he had to say, hey, we're just you know, going to use them this year and ask for the board to just give them away to another project. Or no, just give it just have them give it away to regional planning because he has no record of well, why would we give them away to regional planning i mean because uh, you don't use it basically that's what ends up happening you know and again i hate that i absolutely hate that because because now we've been giving them to you for years and now you're going to come charge us twenty one thousand. Well, no what, well why i hate that is because now we're having this discussion saying we, we didn't use you and now you guys are frustrated mm -hmm. so if you're using them you won't be as frustrated <laughs> That's another reason why I want you guys to use them, so you can appreciate the work we do for you guys, or can do for you guys. I appreciate that is right. And nothing against you, Todd. I, I am frustrated in that yeah. whole process. Yeah. I feel like it's been one of those things we've been paying. It's like an insurance policy we've been paying into for years and years and years, yeah. and now it's our claim. And no, so yeah, that, yeah. we have um, to pay all this money out. Yeah, you know? and, and, and <laughs> this, is not, this is not picking on this last year or my, but I noticed that my townships that have the zoning inspector come, they usually are the ones that are most frustrated. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why that is. It's just a general statement. And it's, again, nothing against Michael's ever, because I know Mike will share with you whatever they're doing. But um, it, just, it just seems like when the trustees come from, from their communities, they have a much better understanding of what's going on. I'm not saying you guys have to come. I'm just saying that's, that's, my, that's my general um, observation. You know, when, they, when, they're, when the trustees come, that community is solid and they're rock on. 
That's why we hire Mike for the big bucks. Though. Well, no, that's okay. And then the ones that, then the ones who, and then in those townships that have trustees that come, they, 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 they hear about the different townships, what they're doing, and they say, oh, no, they're doing that there. We need that. And then they contact me and we do that for them too. So, so anyways, there's some benefits there. Um, but, uh, so I, I definitely understand what you're saying. And, and we're, you know, I mean, look, this may sound cliche to you, but we are an extension of staff. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for somebody to do all that GIS mapping for you. You're, you're paying for some of your professional planning and information to, to provide you. Maybe I've just it's, never been as informed of what you guys do for all those years. Well, Maybe that's we're gonna Mike do, or Dick Bester's fault well, or your fault or whoever's fault. Let us know what you guys the do. The way I look at it in simple terms not is like building it, anyway. an outline of without the plans. You're going to encounter all kinds of problems and try to. Well, but we've gone for 15 years, 14 years, and we haven't had any of that in place, and everything's been moving on, we've been growing, and all that. Sure, but your developers have to change the zone in every aspect to get. To so what's wrong with that? I mean, that's what we pay you guys for. Okay. I mean, we can certainly do it, but it's But just, it's time and money to a developer, and some developers probably don't even consider Brimfield because you're creating hazards. So I mean, know. You, I want just, to, you want to make the process as simple I, as you can. I understand where you're coming from. Well, we definitely need to upload it in the budget. We just have to make sure everything fits that we want to have. It all comes out as well. <laughs> He's all legit. It doesn't matter. So we have to put it all in there just to see. Well, I don't know. Which we have community centers and playgrounds, and we have all kinds of things coming out of there. It's a pressure. We'll have it on the list. Right. So I don't think I guess, today we, I can say yes. I get where you're, you're coming from. from well, you know, we have operated this township for 20 years, and we've operated it pretty darn good. And, I mean, you want to reinvent everything, which I get it. You're the young guy. It's not reinventing. It's this, is, this is standard I'm business talking. Practice. I'm just guaranteeing you, this township would still go on without you, right. or me, or Sue. People want to come to Brimfield. I don't care what you say. I don't care how many plans you have. They're coming to Brimfield. We are right off 76. We have buildable land. Kent has nothing. Talmadge has nothing. They are coming here. I mean, I think if you really want us on board, you got, you're not going to hire another staff member, are you, for this? Have them work and do it and pay us back the money we spent to fund your organization. So, I mean, nothing against you, Todd. I'm just, or you, Nick, I'm just so sick. And Craig will tell you, but he's being quiet. They are all sick of all these studies. We have study on top of study. I mean, I think the best thing you ever did was those plans where you get together and meet. Because we're learning more. I, I, I get it. But Nick, I just wish you could have been here through all this money we put out on studies. And I get it. I don't disagree that they will come, but the question is what's coming. Do you want a truck stop here? That's fine, because what comes with truck stops? We're going to have trailer parks. We're going to have low-income housing. You're going to devalue the properties around here, because if you don't got a plan on how we control this, and we don't have things that we can feed to the zoning um, appeals board, we're going to run into things that aren't going to make Brimfield But great. now we do have a truck service station, so is that meaning that Mike wasn't doing his job? That's because Mike didn't have the tools to make that happen. But we have, we have. We have the tools. The, zone, the zoning is, is correct. Well, I mean, that gets it. but it's not correct right now for. I mean, you said we got property trucks. on how and stuff that needs to be done. I mean, shouldn't you guys be but working on that? We give the, uh, this is part of it. So this I mean, is but part you're of telling me you can't do that unless you have this? Well, it's. Not I mean, because you have more agenda now. It's not a good plan if you don't have a comprehensive plan. I think we're getting nowhere. So there's one. Well, I, I want to just say something. You have 14 different zoning districts. And you have 56 PRDs. You you have essentially 70 different zoning districts in Brentwood Township. So is that way too many, or never heard of that in my life? So why did we have that many? Don't know. Can't answer that. And that's what we have to work with. Somebody comes in and says, "What's what's my setback?" I have to look in three different books to figure out what their setback is, and then see if there's a variance on top of that setback because that happened. So you have all these districts, you go into the district, then you got a PRD district, and then there might be a variance on that property. So then you still have to look at that. And it's not a simple answer. It's like, oh, it's 10 foot. I have to look through, you know, an but hour. When or he two. approves this, I mean, we, if we approve it, he does this, it's still just a document. It has no teeth. Well, it changes the zoning. I mean, that's what the zoning commission But it still has about. no teeth unless we change all the zoning. Well, that's what we're working on. It, it but does, it still it has no teeth. It does it's just teeth. A, you can use it for, you know, the, if you have a problem with something, somebody comes in or somebody does something inconsistent with the plan, it, it is a legal document, and you can use that in court. Um, that's basically why the, the prosecutor's office wants the, the township to have a plan. Prosecutor's office, they can't even get us, they can't even get these cases. Prosecutor's office needs nothing more. 
<laughs> but I think our law director wants the same thing. It's just the right. evidence you bring to court. Because okay. if zoning appeals says no, we're not going to we're not going to approve that uh, that project that, that's non-conforming. Right. Okay, so then what, they then they take it to the court of appeals at that point. The court of appeals and asks us, okay, prove why this shouldn't be approved. Well, if we have if we've been given out all these these changes across the uh, township because we have non-conforming use everywhere, that that's really a win for the person suing us at that point. We need more teeth to be able to provide evidence. Okay, so you said some trustees come down to your place and you go through it with them? Um, well, I would say half the board is made up of trustees, the RPC board who attend. No, 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 you said that they, when you sit down and have them down and they look over your stuff, they like it? No, you're saying they come to the board. They come to the board meeting, we talk about what we're doing in all the townships. And we is it worth me coming down and meeting with you and you show me exactly what we're sure. doing? Sure, and, and back to John's point, he doesn't know what we do. We're actually going to have in March a, a orientation. We're going to do this on an annual basis for all the new trustees, zoning board members, BZA members, city council, village council, whoever, whoever would like to attend to learn about what we do. And we're just going to walk through the different things that are on. We just never did any of that because Dick was always part of your boards and all that. He was there all the time and we never. So you're suggesting yeah, so we never did that in then. March? Well, we're, we're going to have an orientation in March, so you're, you're all invited to that, yes. You can come to my office anytime. You can just, just tell me when you want to come, and I'll set up a time for you so you have to come. Make sure I'm there. Come running around, but make sure I'm there, and then I'll be happy to look. Okay, well, I'm going to make sure I do my dil due diligence after this wedding. And then, I mean, you said you don't have the budget ready. Well, so I'll plug it in. There's a spot. We'll just have to evaluate all the things that we want to have out there in the budget. We only have so much. So in two it weeks, makes it a list. It makes it two weeks. So in two weeks, we can make a final decision on yeah. this because we got Dave and Craig are coming in. I. I don't, I'm still waiting on the Chris thing because well, I mean, he's gone. We're going to, I mean, not even this. Just we need to get road projects moving. We need to get this budget done. Well, the budget's it's in a normal process right now. Right. It's just, I, mean, I feel like we're coming in into February. Budget's done. Okay. It's the appropriations that are not done. Right. That's what I need to do with each one of them to figure out <laughs> what we're spending the money. We have like a $9.7 million budget this year across the town, which is a lot bigger than we've ever had. But... It's what is police, fire, and roads all going to do with their appropriations of their budget dollars. I have the budget. It's just right. Yeah, I was saying we, let's get the appropriations because I would like right. to see road project lists coming out. Right. When I let's just not drag our feet. They just brought it to me last week. Okay. And Craig just got me his, and I'm still waiting on Chris's. So, I think right. Chris is second I, shift now, so I kind of. What if I got to put pressure on Chris? I'll put pressure on. I talked to him the other day. Let's get it done. I just so we can him. figure out what projects we're doing. I talked to him the other day. So we're. I we're think ready. we got projects figured out. We just need the funding. So, I mean, you're ready. So, okay. We have the money. We it's it, The budget's there. We just have to appropriate the dollars that we're spending. Okay. So, by next meeting, we'll be able to have a final mm -hmm. discussion on this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be able to have one for the general fund, at least, because okay. I control that. Right. The other three are all based on three other department heads that I have to work along but with. The general so. fund will be ready for the next yes, meeting, so we can talk me. about this yes. regional plan and comprehensive plan. That's 100% me, so I can tell you 100% yes, that would be done. Okay. Hopefully the other ones will all be done, but I can't guarantee that. Okay, so we don't have a motion on the floor. For this. Well, this was, it was sitting on the table. We tabled it last meeting, so, so I want to make a motion to table it okay. again then. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, man. No, you're okay. You're okay. And come and see me anytime. Just give me a call and that's what I, I hate if you come all the way down there and then you No, I don't off. care. My wife likes getting me. Or at least farther than we were John, before the meeting started. And, and <laughs> Sue and John, is, if you're available, if you want to come meet with me and I can show you some of the stuff that we're working on. I want to go on a road trip. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so no, and I'd like to show you what. Todd, do you have a card with you at all? Of course not. Um, but I do have a phone number. Hey, we can get a card. I do have a phone number. We're paying for his damn cards. That's what we. <laughs> yeah, if you, if, you, if you did this, I have cards. But, uh, it's it's, okay. What's your number, Todd? It's uh, 230 yeah. 297. 2615 is my direct line. <laughs> yeah, so what I'd like to do when you guys come, I'll show you what we did for Streetsboro and for Wyndham and, and for Venom or whoever you want to see. But I want to show you what we're going to do for you because it's different. It's going to be really cool. Now, are commissioner meetings like this where they actually discuss the subject or are they always come in and just <laughs> watch the video? Watch the video. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very nuts. Nice. Yeah, watch the video. It's not <laughs> this way at all. Yeah, you don't want to say anything. I yeah, you've been here. Yeah. So, what does that mean? Where are they discussing all this stuff, Nick? Yeah. I'm just wondering. Okay. Wait yeah. to ponder. Oh, that's okay. Oh, sorry. I like this. I like this. So, uh, the regional planning commission meeting is tonight, 4.30. I'll be attending. Yeah. Uh,
Portage Soil and Water Task Force is actually the 18th. She's out on the Just the 18th. Yeah. Um, actually, um, Dave is going to that one. He's the backup on that. I did not know. I was on that board till last week. I almost put that day off. So Dave will be on that one. Amit's Policy Committee is March 11th at 1.30. Board of Zoning Appeals is February 19th at 7 o'clock. The Zoning Commission is this Thursday at 7 o'clock. And I just approved five below at Cascades. Sally Beauty at Cascades. So that's going to increase the town of Jed. The 2020 Department Positions, Boards, and Meetings is all on the next sheet. So what I did is I summarized. If somebody wants to know where I'm at, and, and, and Nick knows this as well, it's all here. These are all my night meetings. This is everything that, I, there, that I'm going to. Um, the economic development meetings and the public hearings are as needed. So if we're changing zoning and we need three public hearings for it, or if I've got search warrants and I need public hearings for it, those are all in addition to that. Um, so everything's on here. Jendi has a calendar with wherever I'm at all day long. And it's going to be updated all day long from plan reviews to where I'm at, to what time I'm at. So everybody, there's no, it's all transparent. Okay. Hey, uh, town hall survey of property, that's done, right? Yes. Okay, it's, it's not marked on there. It's just yeah. open. Uh, Doug's looking at a little of this. I have not, I have not seen anything or signed anything on the survey. Okay, yeah, that's. So we don't have the official document yet. Yeah. 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 Y
Stancy, who's a developer over there, has been talking to the Just family. So there's always that possibility. So, he just wants a billion dollars for that corner. It's, he's going to have to come to the realization that it's not worth that. Anyway. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's just right. And I don't know if it's so much him. He seems like he's, he's on board, I think, with his family. Okay, so, so, I mean, you are getting called once in a while for a drugstore? I am. Uh, it's We'd like to get one on this side. Uh, I had a developer here offer Mike uh, to buy the 20 acres plus the building back here. He's going to knock this down. He had a deal. The plaza? Yeah, he had a deal with Drug Market itself. <laughs> and that's where it ended. But he didn't have the building. So, well, so surprise. Do you want the $10 million? Well, no, he actually got under. By another developer by three thousand dollars per acre. And, uh, for Casbello's property? Yeah, for the twenty acres, because I think he was gonna pay sixty sixty two thousand and he might get a deal of sixty five with that. And now the other developer no, no, he had a chance. <laughs> so he went for the higher deal and it lost. And so he, he had the guaranteed deal of sixty two. Yeah. And he's not and he's not right. Building, and he's right. <laughs> So, I mean, um, it's red, it's that high. Also, on the last sheet, this is all economic it's development. On the last sheet is everybody that we're citing. So, <clears throat> we try to keep this updated as much as possible, and we're going around and we are citing as many as we can. Um, you know, there's only so many cases that are going to get backed up into the prosecutor's office where we're like, okay, let's hold off until we get caught up because if I go to 10 court cases, with court dates, that's going to eat up a lot of time. So I want to make sure that we start getting some of these prosecuted. And if it if comes a point, I'm looking for a statute of limitations of how long a court case can sit. Because we can order and call for special prosecution as long as I can figure out a way that we find the, the violation in the property enough money to cover our own attorney costs. But if it comes to a point where we're not getting any kind of prosecution, maybe we'll have Mark push it and say, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting until the statute of limitations where we have to write your whole case? Well, and that's that's all the more reason why we need to push this home rule because we had our own law director and we wouldn't be sitting on this. We have a little more control over our I, I can tell you that court date in Madison County was every Tuesday and had eight courses, eight cases in court every Tuesday. And we have our own mayor's court, and and I just I block out from eight o'clock in the morning till two o'clock in the afternoon. I sit in court all day, and I do court cases on that day only. But this is, works a little bit different. I, I can't even get a date for the first court hearing, you know. So I don't, I don't understand. I mean, they're that backed up. Or are they it's not just it? us. It's, not, it's, it's so it's not just us. They're not just it's not the same same because of the recycling or anything like that. Well, maybe because Ritz sounds right in recycling too, so I don't know. I know. Can't use that as a good example, but I can tell you, my conversations down in Columbus is Ritz sound has a bunch of cases backed up. I think they have six sitting on on prosecutors' table right now. I mean, is it worth me talking to Vic? Well, I'm gonna have a meeting with with Ritz Town to get some feedback from them, right back to the board of what they're looking to do because they have some irons in the fire too. So, should I call them? Oh wait. Um. I would wait. Let's get all this on. Let's see what, because I, I don't want to push anything that Rick sounds already pushing. I, know, I just, I just yeah, hate I'm just sitting back not doing anything. I don't want to make it sound like a bunch of them are not going to bring up. I mean, the zoning is work. We're sending letters. You can see all the case closed. Right, right. That's good. Those are the people that complied. You know, they send a letter. They get embarrassed. They're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. We'll clean it up right away. And that's, you know, we got a lot of good people. In I know. I hate taking it. And you have, you have a handful that are like, like this house over here by all we've cited them year after year after year. He finally sent me a notice, and I've got it now where I can actually take my credit because he sent a notice saying I'm not living there, I'm repairing the house, and here's my guide. Here's the guideline I'm going to do electric this year, plumbing this year. Well, it's an abandoned house, so now I can get search warrants because he has no permits for anything he's doing. So we'll get active search warrants. We'll but I thought the county was going to handle that before, Charles. Remember? I thought because so it, it went so it fell by the wayside. Why? I don't know. I can't push them to send adjudication orders. Um, as a building official, in you know, if I would have got that, yeah, I would have sent adjudication orders at that time. Tell me about the dump at the back of Outpost, and tell me about the Thai restaurant. 
So the dump behind the outpost is actually something uh, Dave seen. He uh, actually went back there, and there was some there's stone, there's asphalt grindings, and there's piles that like people are just going back there with their dump trucks mm -hmm. and dumping material. So we've cited them. I have no reply and no response from Mike. Who owns the outpost? Then as we were there on the property, look next door. There's a junkyard. I mean, complete junkyard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Every time it I mean, that yeah. that is something that it's going to take a long time, but we need to get cleaned up for the purchase. There's just no way we could. I imagine there's probably rats and everything else going on. So. Well, buddy, it's, uh, my biggest concern with the outpost thing is they were starting to push their parking out deeper and starting to slowly fill in our, 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 our trigger runs. So they were starting to slowly squeeze that off. So if they squeeze that off, now we have Sherman Road for it. Because that's where the water is. Sherman right. Road track. Right. So, yeah, but the plan. I think that, I think, <coughs> I hate to say this, but I think the gypsy truck drivers are the ones that are using this lot. Right. And he, well, probably, he had to give them the okay. They want to push that as an amphitheater. Outdoor. Right. Is what they're trying to get. Well, but I'm just saying, that right now, they're getting ready to squeeze yeah. off the natural water. Right. He's actually squeezed it down some already. Well, can't we get soil and water involved down? Yeah. Because it's going to have an impact on Yeah, Dave, that's a big impact. We got that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, soil and water needs to get involved now so they can. I mean, he's going to use soil and water meeting on, on what month or Tuesday. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's Tuesday <laughs> I mean, so. but we need to bring that up now and get it on record. But also, you need to follow up after, if you bring it up to the meeting, follow up afterwards with an email just so we have some documentation. Because they, uh, because he actually, the second driveway that's in down there in the woods, I never okayed it to Bob Keller. So I can't fight that where they pipe that off. Cause they actually put two small pipes in there instead of one large pipe to contain the water. So again, that's where we're going to have to go back. But uh, well, like I said, I'll talk to soil and water. Eric so with that yeah. being your right away, could you rip that out? No, it's, it's actually off my right. That is off your right. Where he's got the pipes. It's back on his private property, but the pipe should have been bigger than two small pipes. And like I said, they're choking that area off with debris dumping behind that area, which is slowly starting to, you know, choke the whole area off. Well, is it is it just they don't follow any rules down there? All of that? I mean, <laughs> what's the Thai restaurant deal? You're, you're talking about the Thai over here, yeah. back here. I don't or the Thai down, down there. The Thai no, down there. You're not down there. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You're moving that yeah, too? And... Yeah, I, they, they're not following any. They're going to have to go to court as well as. I've got another, if you look at this list, everybody on this list, I can send to the prosecutor right now. And, and, and come in front of the board and say, I need a motion for you guys to send this off. The problem is, is I could just keep sending letters until the prosecutor gets caught up, but I don't want to jam the system and have 20 cases. How are we ever going to get them done? You know? Right. Um, it just seems like he's doing whatever, well, whatever he wants to this do. Is for years, as we start I looking know. at these zoning cases, this is not, I'm not trying to clean up current stuff. Everything that you see and everything we're demolishing is 16 years plus. I mean, you could, you hear the Howe Road one. That fire was 16 years ago. But the open pool big. hasn't been open in 20 years. And it, <laughs> yeah, and Congress Lake Road, that thing's yeah. been collapsed forever. So yeah. it's like, these are the things, I'm trying to clean up stuff that should have been done 15, 16 years ago. And then try to get caught up to today's stuff, you know. So is that restaurant in there or? I don't know. Yes. The story we're hearing. Is it? Yes. They get, go to the health department? They're not allowed to have a restaurant. They're also not allowed to live upstairs. They're also not allowed to do a lot of things. Well, why wouldn't they be allowed to have a restaurant in there? They can. Know, help, but somebody said, let me back up. But they need to do it the right way. they got to have a hood system. they got to have. They don't have a hood system back there? No, it's like a kitchen. It's a stove. Do they have fryers? I don't know. No, we're going to do our side on fire. I mean, that, place, <coughs> that place could go off like that. It's, remember the old station night fire? Or the yeah. station fire? I'm scared to death. That's going to be the same thing. It's all wood. Dry wood. The great white. Is that who it was? Yep. But I'm scared to death. That's going to be the exact same thing. Is that at the outpost? Because no one will. Yeah. No one. Business owners will. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. When's it open? <laughs> I've never even seen it open. I don't know. All I know is they dropped off pizza the other day, so I know for a fact they cooked. <laughs> Which was dumb. Because right? then we said, What is yeah. this yeah. from? Oh, we got a restaurant. Oh, I got a good Wow. Chances are they don't have building permits because I haven't seen plans. 
people have a fear to look at that place. It's got like 17 editions on it. I'm sure they didn't get all those out, but they don't listen. Why no, not? They've done whatever they want. Right. Well, we gotta get to the courts, but to get it to the courts, we gotta get the prosecutor on board with the court. And that's the problem. We've got too many. I mean, I can go down one street in Virginia. I have, I have to take, you know, quadrants and sections and go zone for zone. The problem is, is I've got to have that machine gun. I've got to have the prosecutor on board. If I if I come back and cite another 50 people today and they don't comply, I have to send the prosecutor. That's if he doesn't do case. anything with it, who cares? He just wasted your time. Right. And yeah. he may have to start the process all over because it's sat too long since the last violation. So that's why we're, we're careful how we move this forward. The engine started. We just got to get the county to drive. That's that's our issue. And, and you yeah. know, we're relying on the same thing with engineering. I mean, we can push and push and push, but if they don't go any further, then it's like, okay. Then you have to wait for one of these people that died over here, their families to sue, knowing that there's a safety study done, and knowing it's the 16th worst, they'll actually have to sue the county and say, we're not doing nothing about it to make it safe. But, and not to beat the land use plan, but that's, this helps us push that because we build more evidence of, right. Well, that we, we, we want to do our, to we want to do our due diligence. Our Portage County, we never get any to see like we just get nowhere with an effort. You know, and maybe another division, even though he's not, but he, he is. Right. But, right. It just seems like he paid for a long time and never got anything else. The time we needed. I, I totally get what you're saying, but I also look at the contractual language. Of I it. <clears throat> So, okay. <clears throat> I have one question for you the high before you finish up. No, him. I blame him. Can we get, can your department build a map that shows where the JED districts exactly land? Yes. Actually, that's a service by regional. So okay. they, yeah, but there should be a map our, already. We had a map. We're not, there. we don't pay for that. I okay. can just ask for the JEDs on it. So we have a zoning map. And <clears> that is, can you give me a copy of that? The only thing it costs us is to produce. So if they, they make a big sheet, it's like seven bucks a sheet. Can I get a PDF them. of it? Yeah. I just need a PDF because the guy who was visiting last night, we're going back and forth. He's like, the JED stops at Howe Road. In the way, it's the whole town. It's the whole town. The whole town. But he was, he's been given misinformation. <laughs> saying, I will, I will find out and get an answer for you. But can you just give me a map that has Talmadge in one color, Kent Jet in another color, where they land, so I can show those. Well, Kent, Kent, goes, Kent goes to 18 and it's up and down how 1200 feet back. Right. On both sides. And then there's, yeah, a, I just, I just need a document no, that there, I can there, there is one here. Actually. We have one in one of the books. Yeah, we had them all done before. We got it all at wall for them. Yeah, 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 there is one here. But if we get it, because then I can put it in DMS too, power DMS, so that we all have access to it, and any new elected official going forward will have that. And then the actual jet, the Talmadge jet goes on the Skipperbrook property, yeah. which is because yeah, it's, it's 1,200 out. feet back for the cat. And we, and we jetted the whole township. Right. And the way we jetted the whole township was in case, say, Beechcrest someday decides to want to change their, their zoning to industrial. Right. Well, well and he was. Could, then you don't have the fighting going on between the cities right. and the township. Right. Yeah, he was adamant that it stopped at Howard. I said no. I said, but I'll prove. I'll, I'll get you the evidence. You know, tell them to take my word for it, so we can get that yeah, back. Yeah. So whenever you tell them, you tell them the whole township's jet. Well, that's what I told him, and there was there was a discussion <coughs> about that. So I think it's just a good document for us to have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's here somewhere. Yeah. We have, well, they're old ones. I mean, I'd like. But it doesn't change. change. But the current zone. Right. 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 Okay. All right. We're all done? Good yep. Day. Road department. <laughs> all right. Get ready for the curveballs now. Here we go. <laughs> no, we're not buying new truck today. No, nope, buy any discussing trucks. Discussing situations. Oh, boy. Uh, how road culvert pipe. I was just informed by the Portage County Bridge Inspectors and stuff. I had them out there looking at it because I was going to do that at an OPWC project of next year, a section of how road replacing the culvert pipes and stuff. Uh, he feels the pipe will not make it to, the, uh, to next year's OPWC grant. Okay. We're looking at a situation by their, by the talk with them and stuff that we need to replace that pipe within the next six to eight months. Is that grass? That's grass. That's probably weeds that got caught up in the, in the wore out pipe. Weren't we having all kinds of flooding issues right behind there? Could that have been part of this that is just draining out the bottom of the pipe? Well, no, what it is is that. That crick runs so much water through there that. Okay, I just didn't know yeah. if this was leading to it as well. But but just no, the is that broken pipe? That's the pipe starting to separate. Yes. Okay. So what it is yeah. is he uh, 
There's 20 foot, 20 foot section on the north side of Howe Road right there. This is by Crystal Parkway, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, that piece is not in too bad of shape. Center piece is what you're looking at right now, what goes across the middle of the road. This is where the issue is, the main issue. Uh, and then the south piece that goes out to the creek on the other side. It It's not in that bad of shape. Them, the first first and third piece may make it to the OPWC grant time, but we're really nervous about the mid piece. I'm on an inspection on it now once a week to walk through there, check the roadway, make sure I don't have a sinkhole starting. We're going to keep an eye on it. Our you can walk through this pipe? Yes. How big is it? Uh, it's 59 by 81. Uh, and it's 60 feet long. So the problem is I don't like being out in the middle of the road with semis driving over my head. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I mean, I will go, I will get in so far where I can take a quick look at it. See, what we're looking at is to see if the sidewalls are starting to buckle more. If they buckle more, then we're going to have to close the road. I mean, that's just for the safety of the public. Uh, what I'm asking for today is as I was talking to the James from the county uh, bridge, we'd like to put a weight limit sign up right there. We'd like to put a uh, five ton and set that up. They give give us a little bit of lead way if something would happen, a semi drives across it, and it collapse. Well, now you're looking at the liability more falls toward the semi because you should have been driving. Weren't they side. not allowed to drive on that road anyway? Yeah, that road, that's what I explained to them. We've already got no truck signs. Right. Tom has got no truck signs. Uh, if Roy was here, he could explain to uh, They pull trucks over that are coming straight down Howe Road, both directions. Well, my GPS told me to come this way. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're not, I mean, I can't speak on his behalf. I'm not pinging them, you know, give them tickets and stuff. Uh, this is a safety factor for us. I mean, put the five ton up. This is something we're going to have to move forward with, which goes now to my road projects. Some of them are going to have to be eliminated because of the cost of this. Right. Because this is something that we ourselves cannot do, the depth, the size. Uh, we need to put up new head walls, all that. We're actually looking at putting in box culvert across there, which would stabilize the road a lot better. It would actually move the water faster from the creek through you know, so maybe the flooding issues won't last as long in the allotment right there, the Oakwood Estates. We're always going to have an issue there because of the creek that runs. I just there. did know since it had a hole in the bottom of it, that was like feed to it as well. No, that's the water will move. I mean, it'll move through this. Well, what are you guesstimating a cost? 60, 70? Yeah. Okay, let's go higher. <clears throat> Two and 250,000 dollars And the sad part is. It's an issue that should have been taken care of probably before how road was paid last time. Just to so, put the middle part? No, we're going to have to replace the whole thing. You're not just going to replace the middle. Because right now we could put a Band-Aid on it and make it last for the OPWC. We've had a discussion. I, like I said, me and James talked about this a lot. I'm in right now, I'm quote unquote, and talks with Mike Collins to see if I can get emergency OPWC funds to help us out because this is technically an emergency. Uh, we could slide a piece of pipe inside, have a company come in, put a pipe inside the pipe, and then they'd have to grout it, brick it, you know, the whole thing, the whole the water to go through that pipe. Uh, you're looking at between twenty and 25000 just for the band-aid on the rip out next year, which to me, I, I feel that be a waste of money. I can't see. But if we're spending other people's money the following year. Well, but the thing is, then you're looking at, Again, you just threw away twenty five thousand dollars just to make it a year. You know, I'm yeah, but, uh, but how OPWC pays what fifty percent? Yes. So yeah. if it's a two hundred fifty thousand dollar project, that means we're still making up a hundred thousand dollars on that. Yeah, yes. spend twenty five, but I'm still getting another hundred thousand from OPWC. Yeah, so yeah, you're spending twenty five thousand, but you're you're really making a hundred thousand. But that's where we're right now we're waiting to see if I can come up with the OP emergency. Yeah, but if we can't get the emergency, I think we really need to explore the band aid. Right. I get it's wasting wasting twenty five thousand, but we're still gonna gain a hundred thousand on the back end. As long as they deem they don't have to do it to all three pipes. You know what I mean? This is just for a twenty foot section. So, right. they, so what's the, what's your next thing? What are we so what are we waiting on? 
Well, right now I'm puffing my thumbs and trying to get an answer if we can get them, but OPWC plans. Okay. What I what I need from the board, like kind of today, is if it's all right for me to go ahead and post five ton signs on. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion to put five ton. Right. Wage limit signs on right. that. And that's prior to the turning, isn't it? So it's, it's not after the turn. So the semis are going to come. Road to Town Line. Right. It, I, the semis are still going to come. come Mongo Road to Town Line. Yes. Is that where you're going to Well, that and we'll have to stick uh, one, one or up on Crystal Parkway. Mm -hmm. we're well, gonna, well, we're, the only part of how we're restricting is from. Because from my. Well, road it's going to. Actually, we're only truthfully restricting that area. But with, but the intersections we're restricting between is going to be between my and Town Center. Okay. Right. Yeah, but we'll just restrict this point. I mean, this way the garbage trucks can't. Oh shoot, I can't. You know, you ain't getting the backlash of. Uh, this is just mainly the old this point. Right. So we're actually going to end up having to put up five signs, one at each end of the our township lines, and then two right on the pipe, and one up on Crystal Park. Yeah. So. So you'll bring this back to us quickly? <laughs> it's going to have to move fast because we're going to see what we can, like I said, we're going to have to see what we can do with it. I mean, yeah, I would like to see what OPWC says first, but if that doesn't go, I'd like to at least explore the total cost of doing the Band-Aid, as you're calling it, because even if we're recouping 50% of that money on the back end in OPWC next year, I think it's a better financial move at that point. Yeah. But I mean, also now we also got to realize on this side of it too. We could put the bandaid in the other pipes fail. You know, and we have to shut the road down. So I mean, we have to look at the aspect of we bandaided it, it failed. And now I spent two hundred fifty on top of that. You know what I mean? So we're actually looking at maybe, quote unquote, by James's opinion, the road's almost to the point of being closed. Now. You know what I mean? For just to let y'all know, if, right. say we have. A, Massive storm, we could lose the road quicker than we think. And so it may, we may not even get to the band aid point. Right. You know, it might happen too fast. So, right. Just, to, I mean, just this I got handed to me last week. I mean, because I know you look at, well, we still got that motion on the floor. Yeah, so, uh, all in favor of putting in the weight restrictions up? Aye. 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 I mean, because you look at that. I mean, you, you looked at it last year, right? But I know when you were, you were under there looking, it wasn't that bad, was it? No, it, it split pretty quick compared to. Yeah, I mean it had some ripple on effects. That's why we're kind of was pushing it for next year's OPWC right. stuff. I mean we looked at it. Uh, it's just I probably didn't make it out that far to the middle of the road. You know I mean you, you would have noticed it. So right. But so far right now, the biggest thing is if you start seeing road collapse, you know, like starting to get a hole. So so that's a heavily used road. I mean you think it'd be a good candidate for emergency fund? Yes, it should. Be. I mean, but if there's funds out there, that's the thing. There might not be nothing left. So, okay, so you're going to jump on this right now. Right. Well, I've already uh, called Mike Collins. He's supposed to call me back and stuff. I mean, I just finished up talking. James sent me all this stuff over Monday. So it's one of them things. We're already rolling on it. It's Because, I mean, I hate to shut down how we're rolling. But we well, could get to that look, point. Look at the bright side. It's going to cut down on the wear and tear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But like I said, this that whole big project I was looking at on this, it wasn't just culvert pipes down through there. It was going to be paving that whole section of the road. So you're never going to stop those big trucks. No, I mean but we, we, we need to do it. I mean, because they're going to put a toll right. They're following the GPS. They have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it Fifteen hours. Never. We can sit here and say, well, they shouldn't be on that road. They're going to. But we need so to put marking to protect us from leaking. Absolutely. I agree with that. It's just, hey Dave, how long do those pipes usually last? I mean, once you put yeah. a new one in, it, it, that all depends on water I mean, flow and gravity. What do uh, you guess? Like the say the box comb we're looking at putting in, none of us will be around for it anymore. My kids probably could drive on it. You know, that's the box combers are the best route to go. That's what you use it for this. Yes, that's what we put. What do you mean a box comb? It's just a big concrete box. You set them in there in pieces and connect them. And oh, so there would not be a There's anymore. less restriction with them for water flow. The water will move faster. Oh, it actually handle more water than the same, like that pipe. Because <laughs> I even made a suggestion, hey, can I get a Henry Lulai in here? Just rip that thing out and put a new pipe in. They, they want me to do water hydraulic tests and all this other stuff. So we're actually looking at, we're probably going to have to go through a consultant firm again 
to do this <laughs> study. Just, uh, I mean, to come up with all the numbers. It's, it's part of business. Uh, yeah. I mean, I hate to say it, Man, I hate to say it that way, but study. we'd have to have a company come in and design the whole project. But when you put that box call, it'll be in there for a long time. Yes, yeah. yeah. it'll, it'll be. It'll handle all extra weight. There's not as much vibration to the pipe and ground freezing. You know, there's a whole different thing. That's actually where we're going to put in the cell floor. We're going to eliminate the two 36-inch uh, pipes and just put in a big box call. Well, actually, it's less restriction of the flow of the water. Okay, good. So, well, thanks, Dave. I can hit my report there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought this was a short move. Thank God. Thanks, Craig. Oh, it always happens. Okay. Uh, number two on my list. I, I got this letter from the Sugar Maple Hills Homeowners Association. Just I just want to let you guys know uh, they are actually not on my radar right at the moment. Four things. Uh, fuck that. Okay. The nuts that you were talking about, that was actually, I've talked to that homeowners association the last couple of years and told them until we get the mains caught up, you know, we would work that way. He was asking because they have a meeting in March, their annual meeting. They're, the coming up. they're looking at, actually, the nuts would probably be after Pembroke. It doesn't well, sound actually, good. They're yeah. still building houses <laughs> back there, though, too. Right. See, and that's the problem. They're, these allotments, even like Sugar Maple Hills, the roads, don't get me wrong, I knew they, were, they weren't in that great of shape. But when uh, Cranberry Creek Development took off, they finished building a lot of houses on that lot, and they tore the crap out of the roads. Oh, I guess I shouldn't say that here, but uh, <laughs> they tore the roads up then, and so these people are, are left with what they, you know, but we don't have the funds to be going in. And I mean, I could leave all my mains go and start hammering a lot of year after years, and then we're back to St. Boat where we're at. Our mains will be junk again, and then we're back, you know, we're trying to fight that process of losing our right. good stuff. And which them conferences, OTA, they tell you your good roads are the ones you keep, bad roads is, is bad. What's the difference? You just fix them when you can get to them. So, I mean, I'm kind of using the state <laughs> philosophy. I mean, I may be wrong. People may not like me for it, but <laughs> we're maintaining our good roads. I just want to let you know this letter. I mean, like I said, most of the subdivisions, every time I do talk to one of the uh, people in charge of the homeowners association, first words out of their mouth is, we pay a lot of tax in this township, which you tell them, well, first you got to go through the state, county, <coughs> and we get the trickle down. We don't get as, your whole chunk that you're paying. But uh, I just want to let you know, I know that area is bad too, but I have prioritized. Right. Just, and, we, and the thing is, the nuts are just, yeah. as, just as bad. I guess butternut, I guess. I mean, I've always yeah. called it the nuts. Butternut's a development. Uh, again, we're at the same thing. We may have to reevaluate before the end of next year. Maybe this area did deteriorate quicker than I was thinking. And, the, and like John said, we're still building a butternut. We might have to pull off of there until they're done built because we don't want to pay mm -hmm. and have things destroyed. You know, so that's we do look at both sides of it. If they're still doing some kind of building, and that stuff. So uh, this this one part of the letter really strikes me. Uh, <clears throat> we pay. Uh, what is it? How much they pay? Contribute a significant amount to the Brimfield tax revenue. I mean, a lot of people don't understand how much money we actually get. They're just thinking, you know, those houses are taken. Well, well so. they pay whatever tax they pay them straight. Yeah, that's that's what what most do, do you make them clear on that? Well, I try to. But yeah. most people, whoa, no, I'm telling you. So most time you end up walking away. Tell them it's a pizza pie. We only get so many slices. I don't even think we get a slice. So even if you cut it 16. Okay. But, Thanks, Dave. But I just wanted you guys to know, that just in case somebody comes up now from Sugar Maple and starts, I mean, we're going to try to patch where the best we can. I mean, like you said, they're, they won't be on the radar this year. You know, they, it, you maybe do, next year, but you guys do a great <laughs> job. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, we're, we've been working on a bunch of odds and ends, like trees going down, a little bit of leaning trees, that kind of stuff. Uh, a little bit of stuff at the cemeteries and stuff. Uh, we're all set for this next round of snow. This last batch really hit us hard. We probably went through over 100 and some ton of salt between the freezing rains and snow and stuff like that. So we got enough salt that can handle this storm or a good shape. It's not 
not an issue. I'll probably be ordering another 200 ton of salt next week. I mean, I still have 400 ton to get, so we're all right. Uh, Cody, today, I, he's uh, redoing his uh, weed control class. He's the one we have where we can spray weeds in the township, our license. <coughs> so he had to go for a refresher course today, just to let you guys know that. Uh, crash reports. I think I gave everybody a copy of the crash reports. That I got from down at the Township Association thing. Actually, Portage County in a whole, for like Brunfield Township, we're in, we're in good shape by talking to their people that are down there. It's not, we weren't even on the board <coughs> for you to know where you're, if you're, Portage County, a few other ones were off, were not highlighted, quote, as <coughs> a serious crash place because most of us have used their sign packages. Re, you know, revamp some things. It's just, just a little FYI to see where some of the major problems is. I mean, I think the one on Sunview, the one little wreck they had on there is the kid that ran in the back of my mini that time. <laughs> that's that's so off though. I mean, it, it's missing like 15 miles of roads that we have. So I was wondering how up the But it's, is. it's just for your crashes. So if yeah. 15 miles road didn't have a fender better property, anything called in, they, it's not. No more than I mean, as you can see, our biggest issue looks like it's Edson and Malloy. <laughs> I mean, when it comes to crashes, but uh, after that, okay. Now here, I just got a, a little discussion I want to do about community community center uh, plowing. Uh, I, I talked to Cass, I talked to little Craig about this. Uh, we're looking at maybe next year change well, for next year's snow season. We need to maybe make a reevaluation. Because uh, we're getting a lot of rentals on the weekends. Well, what happens is, is my side of things, I mean, I don't want to be a bear, but I have to, my guys, if I do something to the community center, I have to call somebody up. Uh, myself, personally, it takes me 15 minutes to take care of the community center. <coughs> well, I have to pay guys to come in three hours over time. So what I'm looking at is uh, we had a little discussion maybe once we get everything figured out at the community center, because this is all new to everybody, we might have to bump up like the rentals for the year to kind of cover. I'm just trying to figure out how I can cover my, my expenditures to plow the community center when I have to call people in for three hours. So the, can I, if I could jump in, the option of discussion was do we raise the rates a little bit throughout the whole year, but then supplement the cost of the overtime, the days paid out of his pocket. But then are we going to do it for the police station and the fire station? They're all commute. They're all government. Well, it's, it's <coughs> right. we didn't get any of that it's money. Out of it. <coughs> it would all go to the general. <coughs> yeah. You would still so, I mean, if this was an issue, could you negotiate <coughs> the contract and hire a private power that would charge you a heck of a lot less? Well, I would see that's where you're at. I, I mean, we're, we're at that. It's a contract issue. It's, it's a contract issue for me. Well, if he's coming in for three hours, I'd make him, I'd find other work for him. Well, but you're going to, you're looking at other aspects of now I'm losing my truck because my truck's one of the problems. So I have to take it, you know what I mean? On the weekends, I'd have to leave my truck, take a different truck, blah, blah, blah. What we're, what I'm looking at is just, this is why I just want to throw an FYI out. Uh, myself, personally, I, like I told Cass, I, told Fred, I don't mind popping in there if I have to, to throw a little salt, it takes you 15, 20 minutes. Now, if it's a plow job, we're all in there anyway, so nobody right. says nothing. That's not an issue. But if it's just for, I mean, I hate to say it, Aunt Susie calls and says she's slipping and sliding on the sidewalks. Somebody's got to run up there and throw salt down. And that's where the issue comes. And if she calls, I mean, now I hate to say it this way, she calls while she's setting up and we put salt down and it ices up a little more. She calls again. I said, right now I got six hours of work time tied up for an hour's worth of work. You leave a bucket of salt at the door. Well, we do leave a bucket of salt. But you gotta get in the garage. <coughs> you know, we're not gonna send something out there. Go out there. Put it in the truck. Can you put a plow on that yeah. thing she has? <laughs> <laughs> so that was the only That's the only issue we got. We got I mean now, quote unquote, this is a contract year for us. I don't know if there's a way I can deem this in there then something, you know, where I can come in or we negotiate it out, we hire a private contractor. I mean I'd be interested in looking 
having a conversation about that contract and looking if we could designate some areas to go out just for workload too. Right. You know, where that, that property just ends up on um, a plow contract where the township doesn't deal with it. No, we're only, you know, I, I agree. We should, but we're only making, what, $100 a rental? Yeah. Well, and you have, and you have to pay, pay the lady to go down there and clean it. And now we're going to be paying for snow plowing. I mean, we're in the wrong business. Well, and that's what we're you know, talking about. Right. But at the same time, we're losing money out of He's pulling money out of his budget. I get what he's saying. To support the park fees, he's losing money that he could be using for other projects. But then they're going to want money for picking up poop yes. and the dog park. I mean, where does it stop? Well, no, that's you part know, of their right, duties. Right, We're looking right. at separating things out. Right. Yeah, he's he's going down and working for Cassie. Yeah. Right. And but Cassie's getting all the money. But it's a government. It's a government goal. Well, no, what I'm under, it's an internal thing. It's an internal fund. Dave's losing get... budget money because he's fixing Cassie's project, right. and all the money that would get paid goes to the general fund, and Dave doesn't get any. Well, see, I'm not, it's not like I'm asking but he for the township to pay for the salt. It's our job. I, I understand that part. It's just, if I would happen to, so far, knock on wood, it hasn't come up, but I've had issues brought up by guys. Oh, you said you drove through, like Sunday, I drove through because I knew Mike had a thing. I just wanted to make sure the salt I put down Saturday was still there. Oh, did you saw it? Right. Okay. So right there, okay, say I don't even, I want to check, which is, nobody can say that, and I'm allowed to check where it one. But if you saw that, but if I, if I would have slim said, yeah, I threw a little salt on the sidewalk, well, then, quote unquote, say Cody could argue with me and say, well, you should have called me in. I want the three hours. So now I spent my own time plus his time. I, I just what wonder if there's a leeway maybe later on that we can make it to where if I go in, I take care of it. Hey, the plow, plow then, how long does it take you? Well, I mean, the whole thing. The whole hour, thing, probably a half hour. Probably half hour. So they come in for half an hour and then they make two and a half hours. But the thing is, you're also running that thing where people. That's piece of stuff. Right. And they have to have two of them. Yeah. Well, well not all. Well, if it's a full funeral, yes. Because you got to have somebody else back to the truck. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad your brother to our attention. Well, I just. Yeah. Well, it's just something we want to throw out there. And we're just trying to figure out. I mean. I'm not trying to be mad at gas or something, but it's just I am kind of losing a little bit if I would have to get can you, that. Can, you, can we do this? Because we have a little bit of time until next year comes mm -hmm. around. Can you track the hours, track the number of plow call-ins for the community center over the past winter season? Uh, truthfully, right now, none. We've had none. Because I've had the whole crew in plow. This has been a weird year. Right. It's just, I'm just bringing it to your attention because of what I'm getting said to. Hey, oh, right. Well, I'm just, I, you know, I mean, it, it, she has an event going on. They see it on Facebook, too, and stuff. And it's like, oh, we might get to go over and make three hours old. Yeah. They're just so, getting a little bit more feisty than they have been in the past. Right. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's, years of them being new and not. Yeah. Being new and yeah, no, right. They're getting a little bit more. Well, let's, we can run some numbers on this. Let's, yeah. let's get to the end of the winter season. Then we can take the number of rentals and we'll do some projections on it and see what the potential cost could have been. I got a thought. <laughs> okay, when we when we bought the farm, Makita, okay, the union has control of the old Edson Road Park. The union does not have control of the farm, Makita's property because that was never put in the contract because that was bought. Well, you also got to look at the Oregon contract. We do all maintenance on all township buildings. I don't know. That was not part of the. Cause I remember when we gave them, when we gave them this and part of the thing, we had to change the language. Yeah, but I mean, by looking at the language, it's uh, that's what I mean. I, we're probably gonna have to look at some things because it's. I know we might have, some, we might have some wiggle room here. But we've been calling in if the road, if the tree fell over the road too back there, and they tell to chop the tree up. Well, quote um, unquote, I mean, or if I say it's not that big of a deal, I mean, I can hit it with a salt through both sides of the road and drive on, you know, but. But they're watching you now and they see you doing Well, and that's the thing. It's so we have a good relationship with them. We want to keep that, so. Right. But, I mean, and on the flip side, though, I don't want it to go, how do you say it? I want the township to be completely controlled by simple things. I well, mean, and that's why I want to, I just want to wait for the season to end. Look at the numbers of rentals we had, number of 
potential days that we could have had at number of days you came in. We, we can do some projections on this. We can work some numbers. I mean, see what the cost is, because it might not be that big of a cost, or maybe there's some general fund supplementation coming back to you. Let, let's work the numbers before we get too well, well, worked up. Well, well, When's well, your contract negotiation be about? <laughs> It's something yeah. we did it last year in December. Okay. So, I mean, we may this year, I mean, I hate to say it this way, we may have to start it sooner. But it's not going to be before spring. No. It's, so, I got a couple yeah, months to work on this. It'll be in the fall. Right. Yeah. So, so while we're, while we're talking that. about the parks real quick, I mean, Cassie, had you, has it crossed your mind about possibly raising some of the fees? Yes. Um, just due to increased maintenance costs with Maryland cleaning down there and just even keeping the building open, lights on, heat on, that kind of stuff more than we had anticipated when we right. set those fees. Um, I wouldn't be, I don't want to set the fees high enough that it creates a barrier for anyone to rent it, right. but I'd figure 25 to $50. So, I mean, you're basically renting that space out for the whole day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the best deals out there. Oh, so it is. I, I feel like a small increase like that would not really deter anybody. I mean, because you could always do an increase, but you're locking the people that are already booked. And right, they, yeah, set it for a future, say, all rentals taking place after the state. Right. So get this That's it well, makes something to consider, because we yeah. are generating more costs. Well, right. the thing is, you ain't say this way, a lot of it's on the weekend. You know, right. I, mm -hmm. weekdays, I don't get too nervous about them because we're that. Right. You know, well, it's, what, it's just the weekends where. It's a good point to run out of. Where we could increase weekend rental rates. And yeah. make weekdays the yeah. same. It's a great idea. Yeah. We just want to cover our costs. Oh, yeah, but sometimes it's better sure. instead of increasing just weekends, it's easier to distribute costs over the entire week. Right. Because to do a weekend rate increase to supplement the additional cost you may occur. Monday through Friday, and the electric, the heat, the gas, mm -hmm. all of that, would have to astronomically increase every Sunday. Yeah. And, that and that's why I think you're better off if you do a rate increase, you're looking at distributing across the country. Like, you know, if, if you would, you know, just from the restaurant catering business, you increase your Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then during the week, you know, because if you want to at least encourage people to get in there Monday through Thursday. But then yeah, we have to look at what the, the total cost increase would need to be. And to do that, we need numbers. I mean, we can't just, I hate throwing darts out there, right? Let's then, actually look at real facts. And then a lot of stuff, you know, I'm not telling you what to do, but a lot of your programs are free <coughs> yeah. for some people. Mm -hmm. I would restrict them Monday through Thursday. Yeah. If they want to use it for free, you know, you don't want to block off dates where you can actually make money. I mean, I know we're not supposed to make money, yeah. but we got to cover our costs. Well, we're trying to cover the that, That's all we're looking at. All right. The cost of it. Yeah. All right. I mean, I, I understand it ain't like I can send John over, hey, John did this, Cassie, take it out of your budget. I plowed for blah, blah, blah. You know, I know that's not, right. but we're just looking at it. We might have to find a different way. Well, it's just been a growing year for Cassie and all yeah. of us. I mean, well, we, never, we never, I mean, I thought it would take off, and it did take off. And I mean, in all truthfulness, I never cared about the place. <laughs> you know, before that. I mean, we never, if we got right. six inches right. of snow, we didn't, oh. we didn't care. Oh, no, I know how hard I fought to get that thing open. So, okay. Other than that, that's my report. Just be ready for Thanks, nasty little mess tonight and tomorrow and Friday. <laughs> All right. Okay. Parks and Rec. Okay. All right. I'll try and speed through this. Okay. Um, January, we had 17 total reservations, which is pretty great compared to our one from last year, where we only opened towards the end of the month, and that was really young. Um, I wanted to quickly read um, a thank you from one of the renters that we had. Not often that we get compliments from people, so I want to share this to you. I uh, just said, just want to let you know that everything for Saturday was perfect. The community center is beautiful and great for entertaining. The maintenance crew did an awesome job clearing the sidewalks, driveways, and parking area. Thank you so much for everything. So, just want to share that with you. That was very nice. Um, previous programs on February 3rd, I had my Groundhog Day for Kids program. There were 31 people in attendance. Nick was there with his kids. Things went pretty well. Yeah, great. Um, we were scheduled to have a Valentine's Day paint night this week. Um, unfortunately, due to a family emergency, our um, person had to cancel. That's okay. We didn't sell very many tickets anyway. So, um, Upcoming programs. I have an open house scheduled for March 4th um, at the community center. And March 26th, I'm going to do the amphibian walk that I did last year. I think that was very well attended as well. Um, community center improvements. The upstairs restroom is now complete. John Matthews completed that, I believe, late last week. Um, maintenance crew painted the closet on the main floor that desperately needed it. 
um, and also painted one of the closets upstairs and added some shelving for me. And they also cleaned the basement floor and added some shelving down there as well. So it's a lot less scary down there if you ever have to go down there. So thank you for that. Um, Parks Department and Young at Heart office hours at the community center um, are Tuesdays. Young at Heart is there from 1 to 3 p.m. and I will be there from 1 to 4 p.m. So if you ever need me on a Tuesday afternoon, that's where I will be. Have they been down there yet for that? Young at Heart, yeah. they were there the first, they were there last week, they were not there this week. So I didn't go I last week. From three. It's fine. They just moved in and they're doing bathing and stuff like that. So. Okay. Yep. Um, the Lion Shelter and the outbuilding at the community center. Um, Dave, Charles, and I went and looked at both of the buildings yesterday. Um, the news was kind of what I expected. They are in rough shape. Uh, I don't really have any motion or anything right now. He's going to send me a full report by the end of the week, and then I will come to you with, at the next trustee meeting. But he didn't tell you anything about the lions? I mean, the lion shelter. Basically what he said was there's no way to know what the foundation looks like on that building. There is no foundation. Well, there you go. <laughs> we you can't, we like. don't know what it looks like. <laughs> um, the only thing is the slab. They poured a slab. Yes. Uh, so it's renovations would be costly and very difficult. Yeah, you they, basically have to take it down. You have to put a foundation in there. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. With that outbuilding, um, the quote that he gave me was, it is more of a liability than an asset at this point. Um, there is a lot that needs to be done with that building. So, um, yeah, I'll wait till I get my official Control report. Control burn? Him. That's right. He may yeah, have suggested that. <laughs> I will say burn. he may have suggested that. I know it is sort of, I mean, it's nice, but it's it could be a safety issue. Yes. Um, I did ask Dave and the guys to board that building up. There have been several times where I've come to the community center, noticed one of those doors open, things have well, moved around in there. Before you board it up, let's make a, let's all talk about it. And if it's not worth keeping, I mean. Well, yeah. we've already boarded it. Well, you got to do something temporarily just to right. keep Just to keep safety. people out of there. I mean, how long would it take you to take it down? So he you said we need to. You have to get it burned. Yeah. Well, we need to contact EPA and make sure we get any that. asbestos, if there is asbestos. I have to do a study he doesn't think that. there is. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need an asbestos study, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no asbestos. Well, no, you, Charles did tell Cassie yeah. you have to have, since it's a government building, the EPA has to come in and do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 no. So unless the tree falls out and we're waiting. Well, go cut a tree down. Most of the guys find the trigger right now. Most of the guys find the I know it's frustrating, but it's yeah, the way it is. Dave, can one of you guys back into it? It is what it is. He did say um, <laughs> once we get that approval from the EPA, we go to the county, get a building demolition permit, and he said Dave could take it down after that. We wouldn't need to hire an outside company to do that. So. So I like already county. took part of it now. For a permit that they Dave could take. Of course. Uh, yeah. yeah. The score of the concession stand area. Yeah. We can cross our fingers for that tree. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it looks. I'll issue the zoning certificate for free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> 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 oh, that's not bad. Charles. I like it. I like Okay. All right. Uh, no pet community event grant submissions. I put that out there because um, we're looking for different, possibly exploring another agency to get the no pet grant this year. Um, I have received exactly one submission so far. Um, I posted it on our website and social media and promoted it. I'll bump it up again. Did you also have? No, it was a uh, chamber for Brimfest. Hmm. Which, why hasn't the council house been around? I've told them all. I contacted her. I've been talking to Judy. Also, she yeah. says she's going to get it to me. I told them, please get it to me by February 21st. So she's got a little bit of time. But, yeah, I'm, I'm anticipating. Yeah, I'm anticipating some last. But then we can we can make the we can make the decision between where we're all comes in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I'll review the guidelines for what they're looking for for an event and everything. Okay. Um, okay, I have two items that I would like to request um, action on from the board. Um, we mentioned the temporary vendor license a little bit ago. Um, I would like to request for township events um, that we would waive those fees for a food truck or whatever vendor may come for those. 
Do we need to do this by individual event? Do we need to do it? Well, this is just for the touch of truck. Yes, so I have a touch of truck oh. event, and then I see what you're saying. Yeah, let's go for event. Yeah, we did, yeah. so each event that you have, you okay. would just bring them in okay. and say, you know, touch truck, and then we would make a motion. Yeah. Instead of doing a blanket across township yeah. events, it becomes a little too vague and gray. Okay. So well, we would just call each one in. And I'll make a, a motion that we waive the fees for the touch of truck. For How vendors. much are the fees? For the I will second that for discussion. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I also how, how much would the fee be for the Dutch truck? Yeah, hundred bucks. Right? Two hundred. Yeah. Two hundred per food vendor that shows up. Two hundred per. Yeah, and that's we won't. We won't make any money if we don't believe. What date is the truck? What's right. the date on the Dutch truck? Uh, June twentieth. That's the first one you got coming, right? I have one May fifteenth that I have one food truck. And you want right, to so let's. Well, we got this one on the floor. We'll vote on this. Mm -hmm. So we have. A, mo uh, a motion and a second, all in favor for right. the food truck test, for the touch truck. Touch truck. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 We make the second motion for May. What is it, Cassie? We just called it Food Truck Friday. I'll make a because second Friday. motion for Food Truck Friday. Which was, what was the date? May 15th. May 15th. I will second that. Now, what is that? What um, is that? Hometown Bank is going to sponsor a van at the Gazebo, and I'm going to have scratch food truck. Um, you don't have any. You're not the property. Okay. Simple event. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, yeah, just put that on your checklist, and we'll okay. just do a motion for each. Okay. The only other event I may have a food truck for would be Fall Harvest Festival. So that's well, should we go ahead and get the Brimfest done? Do we have an official date on Brimfest? We do. Yeah, there's a date out there. It's the same weekend as Balloon Affair. 19th, 20th, 21st? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody brought that Probably to my attention. Yeah. yeah, well, they don't pay now. Because well, prior to this, we didn't have that resolution. Uh, this is new. <coughs> I think we're going to just get it all done. Yeah, what we'll probably do is I just want to have them individually. Do we want to waive it for both of us? Just as a discussion. September 18th through 7th and 20th. So make a motion, let's put it on the top for discussion. Okay. okay, I'm going to make a motion that we uh, waive the fees for Brimfest for the food vendors. I will second that for discussion. That's well, then important. how do we make any, how does the Parks and Recs make any money if you waive the fee? If they right. wouldn't make any money on those fees, that goes to zoning. Yeah. These are zoning fees. So I guess my discussion would be these are township run events that is not. But it is, but we pay all the electric and everything that would help. But all that, you know, what that would do is that would take the I know, the I'm probably wrong. I just right. want to discuss right. it. Right. 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 But how much are we getting from the chamber on this event for as much time, effort, Nothing. and we put into this? No, we don't get anything. It's a community thing. Yeah. So we give up zoning fees, we give up electricity, we give up manpower. Uh -huh. But it brings the community together. Yes. Which I'm. Positive to that. I just want to discuss it. Right. I'm probably which wrong. Is, which is goodwill. I mean, like an A business, yeah. you got goodwill. Probably should wait. I'm I mean, just we don't have to do it right now. now. We can. Well, we don't charge them right now, right? right. It's no. just yeah. a new fee. Yeah, it's just a new zoning fee. If it's two hundred bucks for a guy to move in there to sell popcorn, he's not going to move in, and then they won't be able to get anybody to drive. Yeah, right. but your Boy Scout flavors, and yeah. if you're considering that, then they're gonna. The sauce is butter sauce is thin. Yeah, yeah you'll have to pay 200 bucks to get away because I paid more than what I made. Way more. <laughs> Tell you more what day is the Brimfest? Ten. What was the date on the Brimfest? Oh, 18th through the 20th. <laughs> I'd probably be a few hours. Okay. They have a hard enough time getting yeah. people to work it. Sorry, I brought it. Well, I mean, there's a no motion out there now. Yeah, so there's a motion out there. So, I all in favor? Second. I second. No, second. I second it. Yeah, next. Right. Aye. So you have unanimous passage. All right. Last thing. Um, Bob Parker of Mountain Martial Arts has approached me about doing a martial arts program for the township. I have met with him several times. I have. He's gave me this very nice packet with good reference letters, liability insurance. Um, so what he is proposing is to provide a, so he did a karate program for us. He's done it a couple different times, but okay. it just kind of gets a little bit costly on our end. Okay. He wants us to do all the advertising, all the flyers. Right. That's what he wants us to provide. But we get none of the money. Oh, yeah, we do. No, we don't. 
Well, this, this way. That's oh. what he was proposing to okay. me. In the past, we've gotten yes. the money used in all the advertising. Yeah. So he um, is proposing the first class that we would do. We would get all of the money from the signups, um, and after that, it would be a percentage. And so, I mean, because you, you just brought, I'm going to make a motion in the positive so we can discuss this to yeah. approve this. Mm -hmm. I will second that so it's on the board for discussion. Okay. Uh, I mean, if there is a significant cost that's coming from your office, I mean, do you sit down and talk to him to make sure we get enough out of his percentage Our, to cover it? Well, Miss, Missy McElduff is the one that started it with it. Right. And then we ended up having to make all the copies. It kept getting more and more. And then he used this room for a while. We weren't able to charge him any fees. It just became just would be all of us that we were yes. doing was was paying for all the advertising. So, so maybe from the start, you need to tell that he's responsible for his own material. Cause we're, yeah. Which he said, I'll have to double check. Because I didn't realize I that. He said John, he would make the flyers. But that's a good point. Tell me, your, his office just doesn't have the time to do it. Yeah. Well, this, no, it would have to be in a contract. Yes. We need a contract between us and him outlining the responsibilities of both entities. Um, and then once that contract is drafted, we would need to verify his liability insurance. Mm -hmm. And then that contract and plan would need to go before the prosecutor's office for Demer and Associates, whoever, to review the liability for Brimfield if something was to happen. I know he has liability insurance, but they always go after the deepest pockets. Right. His pockets aren't going to be as deep as coming after the township yes. for in a lawsuit. Yes. So. And I get the as liability insurance, but it's it's a litigious I'm not aside. I'm trying to put you on the spot, but what is the benefit to us out of this? Um, the benefit would be to the potential income that we could make from it, and the just having recurring programs um, for the community. And it starts to build a pro. It starts to build a parks and rec program. Because that's something we don't have yet. Are those? And, and I like that, but I want to make sure if we do it, we do it right. But well, I just don't want it to be. We fund it all. He makes all the money. Right, and we right. just, yeah. I don't want that. Well, I mean, that's good. I'm glad you brought something up because Bob did. He's been here and he does a great job. Yeah. He's right. a, he, he's a he, very honest man and sticks by it. But I agree, we can't be spending. And this will yeah. be held at the school. Not, that is the not, other. Not here. That is the other issue. See, that's yes. great. Yeah, well, I don't want to. We don't want to start rewriting this. And then so he would split the rent, the the um, participation fees, or split the profit. Because then there's a well, big no, difference he, between the two of those. In the right. beginning, he gives us everything, right? Mm -hmm. The first it's for the class. Right. But going forward, if we get 25%, is it 25% of profit? Or is it 25% of the expenses. registration fees? Yeah. Because if it's after expenses, then we need a, then there needs to be something in the contract that allows us to audit those books to, to verify what he's paying, his school for rentals, his copy rentals, all of you know, his copy costs. There, there's a lot of pieces yeah. that come into that contract. Can we just request a contract from him? Yeah. And then... Vote on it after we see the thing. And then we, yeah. we need a contract, then we need to go through it and have legal look at it, look at our potential problems, and set but it I mean, back you know, with all this, contract. we might have to actually have Chad or whoever, someone look at it. Cause That's what I'm saying. If they're, that, back, look if at they're it. that backed up, Portage County, I mean, is this going to be one more thing? And well, that's what I said. It doesn't have to be prosecutors. It could be Deemer, it could be Mar it could be uh, Chad, whoever, as long as we have some legal counsel look at it. Yeah. So when does he want to... Anticipate starting the program. Whenever we can. He's wanted in here bad, so he I think right. that's, well, that's fine. But I just to protect the township. <coughs> right, we have to yeah, so he does. Um, he he does currently provide programs for Richfield Village, Talmadge, and Kent. So um, he has references. I know the people that he has references from. So. So tell me what I mean. We should get the contract he gives Kent. Yeah. I mean, why reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Okay, so we have that motion on the floor. So, so I'm going to uh, motion to amend that to table this discussion. Okay. okay so we I, did a, I thought we did a motion to request a contract. No, well, we haven't. We had a motion on the floor first. The motion was to approve. The, the first motion was to approve um, the karate program. Okay. So that we can get into the discussion. I thought we did move to request a contract with Bob Parker Karate to run a dual sponsored well, contract. So that all right, so that's going to be an amendment to that motion. Then. So we can do so that. The first motion was I made a motion. In the so I need to do the other one, and then we're no. so you we're going to say no to that first one. Right. So we have to vote on that. So we'll have to vote it down. 
Or we can amend the motion that's on the floor, too. We're just making a motion. It's probably easier just to vote no on it. Okay, vote so vote all in favor it. of the con of bringing the Friday program. <laughs> no. No. So motion no. fails. So now I'm going to make a motion that we request a copy of the contract so we can review it and have our legal department review it. Okay. And I will second that. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Two. Aye. 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 Um, I was just going to say that I fully intend on attending at least the first few of these classes just to make sure that everything's going well and, you know, um, and then we can always, you know. So what if the first day he only invites one, he tells them to come to the real meeting, it's the second one. Um, maybe I'll, so we'll I'll, get 12 bucks. <laughs> yeah. No, he's a, he's a fair guy. Yeah. He's Very good. passionate. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. okay. And that is, that concludes my report. We have no action under cemetery. John, do you have any action under fiscal? Um, no, but Dave and Chris, we are Craig. We already got it. next week. We're going through all the budget stuff for your appropriations, and then I'll get Chris in and call us. So we'll have it all done. But your you got your payroll done? Oh yeah. Payroll? Any contracts for upcoming 2020? John, right? Yeah. Did anybody move up? Like on a tier at oh. all? Like, okay. So, and nobody, you adjusted all those? Mine's on all of them. Well, we'll discuss. I just need that. The, the even only thing is discussion I have a guy resigning, which was turning another guy to move right, right. And left and left that way. That's what I always like a little more. So we'll discuss. Okay. Sorry. Sweet. All right. No, I'm good though. Okay. okay. Uh, no executive sessions today. Uh, so for the good of Brimfield Township, comments, questions from the public? If not, we'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 10.21. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.